Mario Maker to cheer me up. So uh, today I will be doing something a little different. We're not going to be making a level or really do anything. Uh, today, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be in the editor. Hang on, let me see. What do we got here? Uh, there we go. Uh, I'm going to be in the editor today and I'm going to be showing you guys. I'm going to be fielding questions because there's a lot, a lot of questions constantly about how to do different things in the Mario Maker editor. And uh, I have, I'm, I'm by no means, let me, let me begin and I'll say this multiple times. <laughs> what the fuck is that emote? Uh, I'm going to say this multiple times throughout the day. I am not a master of the editor. There are people who are way better than me. Like Go Sagan is probably better at the editor than I ever will be. Uh, there are people who are way, way better at this than I am. I'm, it's, I'm just going to do my best to answer because there's always questions about how to do stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to answer as all of the questions I possibly can today. And uh, hopefully this will be a resource for you guys like moving forward and you guys can uh, use it as you make your own levels. So I am not the best, I'm nowhere near the best at uh, doing this, but uh, I will take any questions on how to do things in the Mario Maker editor and I will answer them to the best of my ability. So, uh, I guess let's just go ahead and start, right? Let's just begin. Uh, one thing I want to be clear is that I'm not here to answer like what makes a level good or bad. I'm not here to do that. I really just like want to answer questions because, because like go Sagan and I can play the same level and he'd hate it and I'd love it. You, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really want to do that. Um, I, I more just want to answer like, how do I do this sort of thing? Th those kinds of questions. So. So, okay, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and let's start with questions, right? So how do we, uh, how do we start here? Who's got questions, right? Let's just, let's just begin and let's just go. Yeah, this will be, this will definitely be going on YouTube. Absolutely. Hang on. Uh, I will also write the question down as I get it. So, um, Let's see. How do, how do you make a car level fun? That might be a question I cannot answer. Okay. Well, this is a really basic one. How to zoom out. This is a... And how, let me do this. How do I... Why don't we do this? How do I zoom out? Here's a good one. Because a lot of people don't even know this is, a, this is a thing. All right. So how do you zoom out in Mario Maker? So a lot of people don't even know that this is a function in Mario Maker. So like, let's say you're making your level, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, I really need to move something or do something. If you press your either the left or right stick in, this works on any controller, press the stick in, you can get a massive zoom out mode. Uh, you cannot, as you can see, I can't place any items here. I can't place anything while doing this. What you can do, however, is if once you're zoomed out, if you hit the triggers, you can either go to multi grab, uh, you can go to copy and you can, uh, I think, can you delete? Oh, you can delete. So if you hit the top, uh, if you hit the L1, I think it would be, you can erase while zoomed out. You can grab. And once you grab something, that means you can move it. So you can move stuff and you can copy it, but you cannot place items. You cannot place items. So doing something like this is really handy for like moving big sections and making larger edits. I guess it would be useful for pixel art as well. Um, although I don't really do pixel art, so I, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't be, but, uh, yeah, uh, that is how you do that. Anyway, uh, Big Daddy Diesel, thank you for 18 months. Uh, Weiner Diner, thank you for the gift sub. And Zephyrion, thank you for the nine months. Uh, just for the sake of tutorial for YouTube as well, I'm going to go ahead and turn, turn off alerts for now, just so we can just have the Q&A. But thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the subs. Uh, alerts are off for now. I'm going to turn the alerts off. All right, so once again, zooming out. Right stick in. You can also get a super zoomed in mode. I don't know what use the zoom in mode is. I don't think you really need it, but there's also a really big uh, zoom in. Uh, zoom in. So yeah, you can do all those things. And then once you cycle, you can cycle through the triggers and you can also delete. So, uh, all right. So I think, I hope I sufficiently answered that question. You can actually select, like, look at that. Look at how much you can select when you zoom out. So you can delete whole sections like this. How to use custom screen scrolling? Okay, that's a good question. Let's go ahead and answer that question. How do I use custom screen scrolling? Uh, let's go ahead and answer that. All right. How do I use custom screen scrolling? All right. 
So, uh, let me zoom back in. Let's go ahead. Uh, we're going to show how to use the custom auto scroll now. <laughs> Shake the baby tutorial. Uh, no. Oh, thank you, Cliffy. I appreciate that. All right. So we have our level. And we want to make auto scroll. Your auto scroll function is here on the left side. You can see right here, it tells you auto scroll right there. And you've got, uh, in Mario Maker 1, you had three options. There's slow, which is really fucking slow. Uh, this is, oh, you have to, you have to hit okay to do it. Yeah, I don't think you had to, did you have to do that in Mario Maker 1? I'm not actually sure. A smaller cam. Sure, I can make myself smaller. Okay, so this is the slow auto scroll. Um, obviously, it's incredibly slow. There's normal speed. Oh, I, I don't think I didn't hit. Okay, hang on. Here's normal. So each one is obviously a higher increment of speed. Slow as a stroll in the frozen park. This is the normal speed auto scroll. Uh, this is the fast or cheetah auto scroll. Very, very fast. Have <laughs> very fast auto scroll in this case. I haven't, uh, I haven't made a cheetah auto scroll in Mario Maker 2. I should, I should make one. Okay. And this is the new one they added in Mario Maker 2. This is the custom auto scroll. So once you hit the custom auto scroll, do you see that? Like, it's kind of hard to see. Do you see this like line here? Uh, this is the way you can edit the direction and the speed at which the auto scroll is going so if you go over to the custom scroll see this is how you edit the custom auto scroll and once you're here you can actually so you can add so like we just pr i just pressed uh, a would be the button i pressed right here so now what i can do is i can move this wherever i want so if i move this up now the auto scroll is also going to go up um and you'll see that here uh it will if i don't play something to stand on i will die but now you'll see that the scroll will start going up. Uh, so let's go ahead and just add this. Let's start it. And there we go. Auto scroll has begun going up. Okay, so we added our first one. Uh, this is a good thing to note. Uh, if you go, it also moves up your death zone, which is interesting. So like, if we start the level and I just stay here, I will die if I go off screen. So you can't really do uh, off screen stuff very well. Oh, I, for some reason, I didn't die that time, though. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't. What if I move this down? Would I die here? It does move your death zone, though. I think this might kill me. I have notes on the chapter. There it is. So there's nothing that really killed me. Like, there was, there's no... I didn't get squished by the screen moving left. I didn't get killed by an enemy or anything like that. That's just the death zone killed me. So, okay. You, you have your first part. You want your auto scroll to do that. Now, let's say you want it to go. All right. So let's say you now want it to go really fast. So we're going to add this. And if you want it to go really fast, you, uh, how do you do that? Okay. So you tap here and these are the two different speeds. These speeds correspond to, uh, the cheetah and the rabbit. So if you want it to go really fast here, we can make it go really fast. So let's go do that. And you can make the speed go fast or slow, depending on whatever you want for the level. And there you go. See, it, it, it kicks in. Oh, and I died. <laughs> and I died. So we're going to put another stop here. And this one we're going to have go medium speed. Let's do this. Can you scroll to the left? You cannot scroll to the left. You cannot do that. You can only scroll right. I think you can almost, you can basically scroll straight up, but I think you can't even do true straight up. I think. Yeah, you can also shake the baby. I uh, see right there how it uh, it leveled off and smoothed in. Is the death zone three tiles on? I'm not exactly, I'm not exactly sure where the death zone really is. Um, I haven't really done. I don't know the exact numbers behind it. So you can see here, you can basically go if you try to move it to the left here. Like let's say, oh, I want the auto scroll to go back left. It actually edits it. Do you see that? So you can't make it go left. You can make you can make it go pretty much straight up though, which is really cool. Uh, let's go ahead and add this just so we can go up with it. And I, yes, I can explain the trick I did in the mummy. Yes, Mr. Mr. Sagan said the uh, three blocks. Can I show? Can you use low gravity in 3D world? You cannot. Ah, God. <laughs> okay, so maybe that's 
Maybe that's a little shaken baby syndrome. So the joke in my stream is that if you have an, a custom auto scroll that kind of goes like this a lot, it's uh, we call that the shaken baby syndrome. And I would say that a good custom auto scroll level does not have shaken baby syndrome. You kind of want it to be smooth, you know? Can I do a basic walkthrough of all the tabs features? I mean, I guess. I don't really know if I'm going to be telling people things that they don't already know. So you, so you kind of scroll down, and now when it reaches the top, it's going to start scrolling right and down again. So yeah, this is basically the principle uh, of how you do this. It's important to note for custom auto scroll that you can only have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. You cannot have more. Um, I can't. I cannot place any more. And you can see, even if I make the level larger, you can only, only have 10. You cannot, no, you cannot control auto scroll with the on off switches. So yeah, that's it. You can only have 10 of the little birdies. So that's it. Does Mario fall at the cheetah auto scroll speed? Uh, well, yeah, it's just the same physics. It's just that the screen is moving. That's all. So if you go, okay. So if you want to have, this is a good question. Uh, I learned this myself. Um, let's go to make a subworld. And I was a little upset to learn this uh, in Mario Maker. I was a little upset to learn this. So, okay, we want a subworld. We also want custom auto scroll in the subworld. Uh, can't do it. You cannot have custom auto scroll in the subworld. You can only have normal auto scroll in the subworld. A little disappointing on that one. It would be nice if we could have custom auto scroll in both, but. Yeah, no custom auto scroll in the subworld. Yeah, Mario Maker does not allow you to do that. So kind of a shame, but that's just Mario Maker. Uh, custom custom auto scroll should work the same in 3D world. It should be the same rules. Yes. That's so weird. Yeah, it just is what it is. Um, well, you can do vertical auto scrolls in in um, in the subworld, I believe. You can do that, can't you? Hang on, I'm pretty sure you can. Let's flip back to the subworld real fast. Uh, you saw one level that every time you trigger the on off switch, it returns. Uh, do you know how the creator did that? Uh, I think I do. I think I do. I can try to show that. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, the max timer is th uh, 500 seconds. 500 seconds. All right. We're going to switch this to vertical. I don't think there is a vertical. There's no, there's no such thing as a vertical custom. Yeah. So there's just slow, normal, fast, and then you can change the direction here. Uh, so you can make it, you can make it auto scroll down, uh, or make it auto scroll up, uh, depending on your preference. I haven't seen too many vertical auto scrollers going down. I haven't seen much of that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't turn on the auto scroll here. So we're going to have fast going down. Oh, I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting to hit OK. Come on. There we go. Oh, this is going up. Yes, yeah, so this is fast auto scroll going up. And then this is fast auto scroll going down. Do full walls stop auto scroll until you break them or do you get swished? Uh, I think that's a good question. We can go ahead and answer that as well. Um, let's go back to our main world. And this kind of goes into the question of let's let's go ahead and, and switch this over to where is where is this? Hang on. There we go. How to do the mummy scroll. OK, so if you haven't seen my level of the mummy, it is a one screen. It's like a it's a level with a series of one screens and I can show you how I did that. And this will also answer your question. Uh, we're going to take it off of custom auto scroll. This does work with custom auto scroll, though, um, in case you were wondering. Let's go ahead and just let's just nuke everything. Uh, thank you guys for the subs. I appreciate it. Um, one sec while we wait to reset. Not quite as fast as Lunar Magic, is it? Enough time for a quick sip of coffee, though. Okay. So if you want Mario Maker 2 introduces a new mechanic involving the screen. And I will show you that mechanic real fast. So we're going to make our level. And we're going to put a full wall here. You actually don't need to make it go all the way up. 
be honest. You don't you don't have to have it go all the way up. So we this is a fast auto scroll level, but you wouldn't know it. The camera isn't moving because of this huge wall right here. So if I were to like, I'm going to take that block out. We're going to break the wall. Um, and now it will custom auto scroll. See, so that one block was preventing that from happening. Um, but if we add this block in now, it won't scroll. How do you join two pipes? Uh, I can answer that. So, okay. Yeah. Screen's not moving. So what I did in the mummy is if you, if you try all of the blocks, uh, the only ones that work for this are this kind of block and this kind of block ground and hard blocks. Those are the only ones that work. So how I did, how I made the mummy is I had, this is basically like the, the concept behind it. It is because of scroll locking. Yes. So we're going to put this here. We're going to put this here and let's add a bomb. You'll notice that in the mummy, every section in the first part involves a bomb somewhere. And there was a reason for that. Okay. So you play your level, you get the bomb, you succeed, you break through, and then we're moving on to the next room. This is, this is basically how I created the mummy. So, and then if I did that again, it would, uh, I could, I could blow that up as well. Does the wall prevent custom auto scroll? No, you can, you can, you can use custom auto scroll with this as well. You can do that. I think you don't even need to have, I think you don't even need to have this. Cause I don't think I had this in the mummy. I think you don't even need it to go all the way up. Let me, let me actually test this. I'm actually not entirely sure. So yeah, you don't even need to have it go all the way up, which is pretty funny. <laughs> no, ice blocks do not work. We tried that. Ice blocks do not work in the same way cement does. If you climb up the wall, will the auto scroll resume? I'm actually not sure. I don't think so. Um, I'm actually not sure on that. You can try to find out. You don't have the tile above the screen. No, it doesn't. So I'm up here. It doesn't matter though, because the block is still there. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, yeah. So, um, I also, the same thing applies for a vertical section in uh, in Mario Maker. I guess I can show that as well. Um, let's see. A vertical section is a little bit different. I can show that real quick. It probably would have made sense because I probably I knew a bunch of the questions I was going to get today, but it probably would have made sense if I like pre-made levels to show this. But uh, the same thing will apply here. We're going to do this. Uh, I maybe need to move it down. Hang on one second. No, you can't move right because the screen isn't scrolled over there. You can't do that. Um, I don't know. This might not actually stop it. Hang on. Okay, so that doesn't stop it. I think the reason why it's not stopping is because I need this. This might be why. Man. Okay, that's why. So same kind of principle. Also, oh, so you notice how the screen is scrolling, right? If you don't want the screen to scroll right, you have to build this the entire length of the level. <laughs> you have to make it go the literal entire way down uh, and do this. And now, now the screen will not scroll to the right. So no screen scroll. Building the walls is building solid walls is how you control the camera in Mario Maker 2. So if I were to do this, uh, you'll see the same thing happen as we as it did in the main world. And the mummy also does this. This the the second half of the mummy. Is the scroll speed constant? Uh, you could change it if you use custom auto scroll. Yeah, you would you would have to do custom auto scroll. See, now the camera's moving down, go down and same thing. So the reason why it didn't stop here is because I didn't do this. This is why you need this on this right side. So you also need that. Uh, and now this time it will stop. Oh, when you, these levels can be kind of annoying to make in the editor because depending on where you start Mario, you'll like the level won't work, but the, the person playing the level will never actually know that. And now, now it stops. Does that kind of make sense? Does that kind of show what you do? And I mean, like, whatever you fit into this section, that's up to you. But that that this is mechanically how it's done. It's the solid walls going left and right in the main or the subworld. 
All right. Uh, let's see. What are, and what other questions you guys got for me? What else? I oh, somebody asked how you link pipes. Um, this is this is a a really easy one. Uh, how do I? Whoops. How do I link pipes? This is really easy. I can do this one. I can do this one with my eyes closed. Let's go ahead and reset rocket. Yeah, only ground and hard block works. You can't figure out how to put on off blocks. Uh, I can show you that as well. Uh, linking pipes is easy. It does. The game does it for you. Is there a pipe limit? Yes, I think it's eight pipes you can have. So can't go into this pipe. Obviously, if you want to make Mario go into a pipe, you drag him into the pipe just like this. Easy peasy. That automatically creates an uh, a sub world for you. So now I have created the sub world for this level. It, oh, is it 10? Okay, 10 pipes. Uh, so you can choose between a horizontal or a vertical layout. Let's go ahead and say horizontal. And those pipes are automatically linked. Um, and these pipes will transfer back from one another. Pretty easy. 10 connections. Well, there you go. I'm like, I don't know the actual limitations. It's usually never an issue for me. How do you stack pipes? You can no longer stack pipes in Mario Maker 2. They have removed that from Mario Maker 1. Uh, here's another here's a, a neat little trick uh if you want there's a lot of ways to make it so the player can't go back in a pipe this is like the most elegant way so if you want to make a one-way pipe uh, a lot of people in mario maker one would put uh, would stack a pipe underneath a pipe and i always thought that that was really funny when all you had to do was do this and now you can't go back in the pipe <laughs> there's no way uh if you had a pal you could re-enter this pipe but if, if you if it's one above the ground, you can't re-enter it. So that's a way to make a one-way pipe. But you got to be aware that you can do stuff like that. But you can actually use stuff like that to your advantage. Slopes also make a pipe one way. Do they really? And I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of ways. Like there's there's a million ways to make a pipe one way. Like you just you could just really really do something crazy like this. And now now the player will never ever get back in this pipe. <laughs> Because they literally can't. So there's there's all different ways to do it. Yeah, I know there's there's so the editor is new. Mario Maker's been out for just two weeks. So there's gonna be a, a ton of things that I don't even know about and ways to manipulate the editor. Or one way. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways you can do stuff like this. There's gonna be a lot of different ways to do everything. I'm just kind of showing you the ways I prefer and like the easiest way. So after starting a subworld, can you remove it uh without killing the whole level? I mean, if you don't want to use your sub world, the player need never know about it, right? Like if you're like, you know what? I don't really want a sub world. Just delete the pipe. The sub world still exists, but the player can't access it. So just don't have the player ever go there. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Um, is it possible? Okay, so here's another question. Is it possible to play more music from the different Mario games besides Gusty Garden and N64 Slide, etc.? All right, so if you go to your sound effects here, why don't we why don't we do something on sound effects? How do I change music? Let's go ahead and do this. This is a good question. How do I change music? So the first thing you want to do, uh, your sound effect tab is in the top left. So you want to go to your sound effect tab. Uh, if you're going to change music for a level, uh, you have you obviously want to get your sound. Effect. Let's say. I want the boss music, right? Let's say I want boss music. You can place the sound effect and you can have Mario like run into it like a, like any other sound effect. And that causes the music. That kind of sucks though, because if Mario runs far enough away, the sound effect will stop playing. And that can be really annoying. That happens like so often in like 100 man. Like eventually the music will stop. Let's say you want the music to play the entire level to like See, the music just stopped, right? Uh, you can lay like a million sound effect tabs, but a lot of people might not know this. You can just grab the sound effect and put it on Mario himself. And that actually will remove it for the entire... That will make it for the entire level. So now it doesn't matter what you do. The music will play the entire level. Uh, you may not know that. Yeah, you can also attach it to enemies and you can do stuff like that. That that it go that goes for every sound effect. So like, uh, let's see. Same thing goes for the Mario Kart music, right? So that that applies to all of them. Hey, 
Mario has music in his brain. Infinite ninjas. I don't think that would work. No, it will not stop playing the music if you go into a sub world. It will not stop. And it'll keep going. When you attach to an enemy, does it play while the enemy is on screen? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not the best when it comes to sound effects. So I'm not 100% sure. I don't use a lot of sound effects. Um, but I will try it. It might only play when you jump on the enemy. But uh, we'll find out. So we'll put them. We'll put that uh, on the enemy. Okay. So once you despawn the enemy, it stops playing. So it does play when the enemy is on screen. I wonder if it'll stop when it dies. Yeah, music's over. <laughs> Turn off the music. Nice for bosses. Yeah, that would work pretty well for bosses. I agree. I don't use a lot. I really do not use a lot of sound effects. That's like the thing I'm probably the worst at in the editor. Hightower from Police Academy for the real sound effect tutorial. <laughs> we lost the beeps. We lost the creeps. We lost the sweeps. Can you change the music for only Subworld? Uh, yes, but you'd have to find a way. Like you wouldn't want to place it on Mario. You'd have to find a way to make the music play the entire time without it stopping. And depending on kind of what level you want to make, you'd have to place the sound effects in a certain way. I don't necessarily do that. Um, I don't really do that a lot. One thing that happens a lot in Mario Maker levels is that the music will like stop and go, stop and go. And I always find that annoying. So uh, you'd have to, I think you're going to have to figure that one out for yourself. Most of the time I prefer just don't fuck with the music. You know, I, I just don't, pre I prefer not. I think you can put the music in a pipe. Is that actually true? So let's, uh, let's try that. I think you guys, I think I'm going to end up learning more today than you guys are. <laughs> I want to see. Oh, the space balls emote has been gone for a long time. All right, let's see. We're going to put, uh, let's go ahead and put Mario Kart here. I haven't done much experimenting with uh, sound effects. I, I will not lie about that. Yes, you can. I'm, I'm certain you can attach music to a poison mushroom. Did you do a music changer by hitting a switch? Uh, I'm not sure. I think if you hit an on off switch, you could like activate it, but I don't know. Yeah, so it looks like it's only when you come out of the pipe and then it stops. So yeah, that's not going to be a permanent music change. So no, that doesn't work. Uh, you need to come up with a different solution. I don't know if you could like, maybe if you put it on like a POW or something like, that's up to you to figure out. I don't know what kind of level you're trying to make. You can have an enemy on a track that follows you the entire time. Ah, uh, so even just carrying the POW doesn't activate sound effect. If you throw it, it goes off. Is that gonna play the whole time? Nope. <laughs> Damn it. You know, getting music to play the entire time is really annoying. It's really, really annoying. Uh, yo, Diesel, thank you for the bits. Appreciate it. So really, like, the most reliable way to make music go the entire time is to just place it on Mario. Then you'll never have an issue. It'll just play literally the entire time. How does the Angry Sun react with music? I'm not sure on that one. I haven't I haven't used the Angry Sun because, in my opinion, the Angry Sun is pretty fucking worthless. But yeah, these are all the different music options. There's also other music options you might not know about. There's also the bonus music right here. Um, there's also peaceful, which is nice for some, I like peaceful for levels that are going to be with annoying. So I, I, I do like the peaceful music. That's pretty nice. The Wii music is the Mario galaxy. Can you overlap music pieces with each other? No. Once one, once one sound effect starts and then another one starts it, uh, they override one another. What do the different night modes do? All right, let's, uh, that's a good question. Let's go ahead and try that. I am, I haven't made a level with the night modes yet, but I am mostly familiar with them. What do the night modes do? Let's go try that out. Let's, uh, rocket everything. Poison shroom level with horror sounds. Let's, uh, let's switch it to SMB, I think. That'll be the easiest way. All right, SMB one. So, oh, you know what? All right, you know what's actually a good thing? Actually, let's start with how do you unlock 
I don't really remember because I did this on day one. How do you even unlock the night modes? Because a lot of people don't actually know how to do that. I think if I, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think if you want to unlock the night modes, you place the sun, you uh, hold A on the sun, and that gives you the option for the moon. And when you switch to the moon, it automatically switches you to night mode. And then the, and then the game is like, you have now unlocked night mode. I think that's how you do it. So yeah, a lot of people actually do not know how to do that. So, <laughs> but yeah, if you automatic, this will automatically switch you from day to night. So uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at all the different night themes to see what they do. Uh, let's go and check it out. Night mode get. All right, so this is ground. I forget what night mode ground is. What is night mode ground? Is it like low gravity or something? Wait, what the fuck is night mode ground? Does it do anything? <laughs> is it just go? Oh, enemies float? Is that all it is? I have no idea. Is it just Goombas? It only affects Goombas. Wow, I actually had no idea. Oh, power-ups are evil. Okay, interesting. I actually had, I had no idea. I honestly had no idea. Oh, okay, so we've got the rotten mushroom. Uh, so it looks like normal mushrooms are, we now have a new enemy that's the rotten mushroom. This is the one you may have seen in story mode. This one, this is the one that follows you around. It's a really cool enemy. I kind of wish, I kind of wish you just had it in normal. Like you could place it in any mode, but yeah, poison mushroom will follow you. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, chain, so apparently chain chomps are different. Let's see what chain chomps got. That is a very long chain chomp. Why? Why don't we have why don't we have long chain chomps as just an option? That is a big boy chain chomp. <laughs> I did not know that. Is that in all the night themes? Is chain chomp long in all the night themes? I did not know that. Uh let's see. So I think that's all the changes in this one. Oh, right, right, right. Also, uh yeah, I was I was aware of this as well. Normal power-ups will run away from you in night mode let's go ahead and place a mushroom here so yeah normal mushrooms are gonna do some pretty crazy shit i think they they like run from you yeah they just run away from you pretty neat i don't know really what you can do with that with a level that's up for you to decide but yeah power-ups are gonna have different behaviors let me see what fire flowers do let's just go and see what all of the power-ups do now that i think about it Do thwomps and booze do something different? Let's see what we got. He gets longer at night. <laughs> I like the fire flower running from you. I like how it, like, it looks like it gets scared and then like turns around I like that. So yeah, power-ups have different behaviors in night mode ground. Do thwomps do something different? I don't think they do, do they? Wait, this is a down thwomp. Why is it not going down? Oh, there it is. That was really strange. What? How did I wait? I never knew this. I have never seen this in Mario Maker. So they're like booze. I have never seen this. Has anybody seen this before? I did not know that. Weird. I have never seen that. You've seen this level? I have not seen this at all in Mario Maker. I did not know this. Yeah, I, that's why I said chat's going to teach me stuff that I didn't know. You saw this in Potatoes first level? I like the look the Thwomp is giving you. It seems like it takes a longer time for the Thwomps to actually activate. Look at how close I am under the Thwomp and it's not going off. That's pretty weird. So is it going to follow me to the right? It will follow me to the right. What if I, uh, what if I give it wings? Let me see. So it's like wings are making it float, but it's not doing anything. Oh, uh, I guess, I guess the wing, the wing chain chomp doesn't, doesn't chase you, I guess. Interesting. Sideways thwomps go down. 
There's so much stuff I, I just didn't know. <laughs> most of the night themes, I'm not going to lie. Most of the night themes, uh, I haven't... I don't enjoy. I'm going to be... I'm going to be honest about that. I don't enjoy most of the night themes. Does this do something different? No, it's hard to tell. What if I do this? Oh, wow. So sideways swamps go down. <laughs> oh, look at that. He's like chase. He's like, he also goes up. Wow. That's really funny. <laughs> I like the look on his face. Pretty good. Yeah, I think it's the music that makes me not like it. He's giving you the, the, the stink eye. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the stink eye. Somebody said place booze. Does boo do booze do something different as well? Oh, so this reverses booze. So now if you're looking at them, they come after you. If you look away, they stop. Okay, so this reverse reverses boo behavior. Can you stand in thwomp? I don't think so. Interesting. Anything else we want to see in this theme? The music's lit. You find it weird they limit what you can what limit you between what you can do in different themes. Try boo rings. What do boo rings do? Oh shit. Whoa, it fucking chases you. Oh my god, I never knew this. This is awesome. Oh my god, this is so cool. I never knew a boo ring would chase you. What if it's uh got wings? Yeah, Chad is literally teaching me about the game right now. <laughs> this is really cool. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. This is horrifying. Oh my God. This is the worst thing. <laughs> All right. Well, good to know. Level ID is coming. Uh, where, yeah, where Chad tries to answer all of my questions. Red Koopas? Uh, to, to be fair, I, 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 I fully admit that the night themes are something I'm not 100% aware on all of the changes. That's not something... I haven't spent a lot of time with the night themes yet. I guess let's place a Koopa here and a Koopa here. Let's see what these do. How do you unlock the night themes? Uh, I already I already answered that. You just place a sun and then you uh, you switch it over. How do you fix your student debt? Uh, I don't know if there's an answer to that one. Uh, these look the same. I don't really see a difference here. Does boss behavior change? I don't know actually. I have no idea. I don't think so. What does Lakitu do in night mode? I don't know. He looks the same? I don't see any differences. So no, I don't think so. Oh, green Koopas walk off. Yeah, that's that's the difference. Re green Koopas walk off the edge. Yes. All right. Politics are welcome. No, no politics. I think bosses are exactly the same. Are the Magic Koopas always red? Uh, in SMB1, yes. Yes, they are. 3D World does not have night modes. Okay, so that's that's the ground theme. Let's take a look at the sky night mode. Let's figure out what this one does. I don't, I don't really remember what a lot of these do. What is sky night theme? Okay, so sky light theme is low gravity mode. So that means everything is going to be moving really slow and you will be in the air for a very long time in this mode everything is affected by low gravity and i kind of want to show something funny in nsmb with uh with this mode yeah this is like uh, grand pooh bears uh zero zero g's given like that level nsmb in this theme is kind of crazy because you can do this <laughs> Dude, I just jumped. I just jumped the full length of the level. <laughs> Pretty
pretty crazy. Yeah, so with spinning and NSMB, you can go basically forever. So it's cheating. I have I played a I played a speed run that had a section with that that was pretty hard. But it was pretty cool. But yeah, you can you can basically spin forever in this mode. Uh, there might be some other changes. So there's gonna be there might be some stuff like I, I miss here, but I'm just trying to cover everything as best I can. All right, I think I don't. Oh, this is uh so ground night theme is uh, everybody's favorite. It is uh, underground. It's uh, upside down. Do not make levels with this. Do not send levels with this to me. Uh, just fuck off with these levels forever. They are awful and I hate them. Do not send levels like this to me. <laughs> I haven't done, you know, it's, it's like extra disorienting. So when you're making an upside down level, you'll notice that the level flips itself automatically for you. So you have to build it right side up. You don't, you don't build it upside down as well. I actually wanted to try doing this. Oh my God, dude. Wall jumping is the worst. <laughs> I hate it. I haven't played a new Super Mario Brothers upside down level. I haven't played one of those. Yeah, I have played an upside down Kaizo level and I hated every minute of it. Okay. Uh, forests. So the forest theme, we should actually probably talk a little bit about forest themes later. So the forest theme uh, creates the lava, which is like the toxic lava. And uh, you can actually control the toxic lava yourself. Let's see, where actually, how do you do that? Okay, right here. So in the nighttime forest theme, you can control what the lava does. Uh, you can place it, you can move it up. You can make it scroll as well. So by dragging, let me zoom out again. By dragging this up, you can control how high the lava goes. And then by, by pressing this, if you have this arrow, this means the toxic lava is just the, the toxic sludge or whatever. It's just going to go up. If you do this, it's going to go up then down. Um, I think if you do this, you can make it go down, I think, right? Yeah. Okay. So then in this, you can also just make it go down and then back up. So lots of different uh, options you have with the lava. This also applies to uh, castle levels with lava. This also applies to that. You cannot firewall climb anymore. That's That's been changed. Uh, yes, you can also control the speed. If you hold the A button here, you can make it go uh, same as an auto scroll speed. Uh, there's really fast, medium, and then slow. So this is the fastest speed. And you can make it go really slow. Oops. Let's put it back. Whoops. Doing that. Make it go really slow. So now you can see that the lava is going down very slowly. So there's all different kinds of options of levels you could have with uh, with that. You can't make... No, you can't make lava custom auto scroll. Can't do that. Uh, it only goes it goes up down it goes up down or up and down or down and up those are your options poisonous water well there you go okay so that's the forest night theme i think uh uh underwater nighttime theme is dark i believe yeah this is dark uh, dark themes are pretty fucking bad, but they are pretty interesting because there's all different ways you can add light to the level. Uh, you can do fireballs, which is pretty cool. Um, and let it so the player can make and be able to, uh, yeah, never make this pretty much. But fireballs create light. Um, enemies create light. Uh, also sound effects create light as well. Let's see. Um, so different things create light. Yeah, you can, uh, so the booze and uh, you can see that there's a little bit of light on screen because they wanted to show you where they were. But yeah, enemies create light. I think uh, wigglers do something interesting underwater. Where's a wiggler? Where's a wiggler? I think wigglers do something pretty unique. Yeah, check it out. Wigglers do like this like spotlight thing. That's cool. I, I wonder why do they do that? <laughs> why do they do that? You check it out. It's like a little it's like a little submarine spotlight. I don't know why wigglers do that, but wigglers do that. 
to signal where they're gonna go i guess i guess but yeah uh sound effects also can add light um let's see i don't know if a firework does does a firework add light i know this one does where is this one where is the cheer from heaven you have to forgive me i don't do much with sound effects where is it it's like the ah, glory where is it i was just on it was i i didn't i, don't, I never use sound effects dude <laughs> cheer drama clatter oh is this it oh glory there you go okay sorry i never use sound effects Let's see if a firework does that's actually really cool check out the fireworks so it creates small light and then it creates big lights that's really neat that's pretty cool and glory is like around here so yeah glory kind of lights up the whole level so yeah there's all different kinds of uh of things that can create light and night mode uh ghost house is exactly the same uh it's also night mode so that means the yeah it, it will create light in the exact same way can you mute the sounds from these you cannot no there's no way to mute the sounds on off chain is the amount of light you'll see as well do they i didn't know that if that's true um i've never heard that you might use that can you switch the music yeah we actually covered that earlier again this will all be going to youtube as well yeah if you give a, if you give the player a star in night mode it just creates light so like just lights up the whole level how much light for a fire clown car i mean you can experiment with that on your own it uh, the fireballs will certainly create light though all right so that's the ghost house night mode uh the desert night mode let's go ahead and let's just delete everything real fast uh, thank you for the resets. I've got alerts off for now while we do the tutorial because I don't want I don't want a bunch of alerts going off uh, while we're answering questions. All right, so let's make this. Night. Oh, if you want it, once you've unlocked the sun or the moon, rather, all you have to do to make it night mode. You don't have to, you do not have to have a moon in your level. All you have to do is do this, and then you make it night mode. So you don't have to have a moon in your level. So nighttime desert adds wind. Um. This is so is this I think there's actually differences between the different versions. I think this one is constant right wind. Is it not? In NSMB. I think this is just constant right wind. But if we were to change this to SMB1, I think it's RNG, whether the wind is left or right, I think. So if we do this. So the wind's going right, and then it's going to change in a few seconds. Yeah, right. And now it's going to, it's either going to go right or left. It's 50 50, as Jaku would say. SMB3 is when that goes off and on to the right. Um, so yeah, all of them do different things. It's important to remember that there are no night themes in 3D World. No night themes in 3D World. You cannot change the speed of the wind now. You cannot do that. How fast can you go with the constant right wind plus cheetah auto scroll? Well, a cheetah auto scroll doesn't make you go faster. It just makes the screen move. So it wouldn't help you much. What does uh, SMW do? Is this also RNG or is this constant wind to the left? So I think this one is also, um, is this just alternates? Oh, it just alternates. Okay, got you. I did not know that. Like I said, I haven't done much experimentation with the night themes. All right, airship at night, I believe is, uh, I think this one is the enemies have low gravity, but you do not. So I am playing normally, but the enemies, uh, oh, it's important to remember that shells, shells never have low gravity for some reason. But uh, yeah, the enemies have low gravity in this, but I do not. I'm just playing normally, but the enemies have low gravity. 
which is pretty cool. You can probably, you can do a lot of different stuff with this. Well, buzzies do, but see like the, the Koopa has low gravity, but when I throw it, it's just normal. So there's no, uh, the shells do not do anything crazy like that. Yeah, this is one of the cooler night themes. I would agree. I would definitely agree with that. Bombs, they finish their moving, go get back to low gravity, do they? All right, snow night theme. Uh, a snow nighttime theme makes everything ice physics. So every surface you place will all be ice physics. So you don't have to place ice blocks. So this makes every single thing in the level will be ice. If you play SNW, everything feels like ice. <laughs> No, I, I'm already aware, Kevic. I'm already aware of that. So yeah, this is all ice. Don't make a level like this. Eh, I think you can make an interesting level with the ice theme like this. And the final one, which I think is the most disappointing one of all, is Nighttime Castle. Uh, makes it into a water level. And it's a water level, but the enemies, the enemies behave as though it's not a water level. So yeah. Kind of disappointing. Then it should be booed for that. I kind of wish it was like something better. That's random. Yeah, just strange. That's cool. Like the sunken temple levels. Yeah, apparently Nintendo, you know, Nintendo copied me from Grand Portal 2, but they didn't listen when I said nobody wants a water castle. <laughs> they weren't listening. God damn it. Yeah, I'm sure you can do something. I'm sure you can do something cool with it. The castle theme nighttime with a shell is interesting. Why disappointed? It's like flying because swimming sucks. And Mario isn't built around swimming. It's built around running and jumping. Also, since this is the castle, you can do stuff like this. Same as the toxic the toxic water from a jungle. So, yeah, they, they, did, they obviously didn't read the message box. The message box is in Grand Portal 2. So you can do the same thing with uh, the lava as you can with the toxic water. Um, but yeah. Oh, if you didn't know, this is what Kavik was referencing, by the way. Uh, if you change SMB3 to nighttime, you actually get the Bowser's Castle tile set. Like the ground all becomes Bowser's Castle from SMB3, which is really fucking cool. It's just a real disappointment that they made it in a shitty theme like this. It's really, really disappointing that they did that. I'm actually, I'm, I, I, I was, I'm still pretty mad about it. <laughs> I know, right? You can have this amazingly cool tile set, but only in the water, right? Fucking why? Why not just give us this tile set whenever we want it? So, uh, I love, I love Mario Maker, but like I said, my, if I had to give my final thoughts on Mario Maker 2 after playing it a lot for two weeks, it's that Nintendo, Nintendo took giant took three giant steps forward with the game and two giant steps backward <laughs> is is the ultimate review of mario maker 2. the amount of sprites in smw are so limited do you walk normally no you're still in the water you still move super slow so there's no yeah what's the worst thing about mario maker 2 the worst thing about mario maker 2 is the lack of being able to download levels and edit them that is the worst Definitely explains the enemies a lot more. How do you make... Oh, okay. Here's a question. How do you reliably make chain chomp pegs? Okay, so we showed all the night modes. There's definitely more I could show with the night modes, but at least covered the basics of what they do. All right. Uh, why don't we just make this how to... Uh, how do I make enemy setups? Why don't we just call it that? And I'll cover chain chomps in there as well. Uh, let's go ahead and delete everything. Let's go back to a daytime theme. How do? Right, I'll cover. I'll cover the shell dispensers as well. All right. So in a recent level, I used a chain chomp stump to platform off of. You can see here if you have a chain chomp, there's no option to just make a stump, right? Like, so you can't do that. So you have to do it yourself if you want to have a stump. Uh, is this going on YouTube? Yes, this will be on YouTube. Probably very soon it'll be on youtube like tonight or tomorrow so if you want to make a stump you have to kill the chomp so the easiest way to do that is to have like a bomb like this and do this and then so i'm dropping the chain chomp onto the bomb and now you have a stump that's one way to do it uh, again there are lots of different ways to do this but this is one way to do this 
You can even trap the bomb from moving by doing this. And now you have a stump. And whatever you do with that stump, that's on you. Uh, how did I make the parachute stump? Is I put, if you put this on here. And let's see, I don't, I'm actually not sure how I, I don't remember how I did it actually. <laughs> oh, I know how I did it. So if you wanted to make a parachute stump, I think you'd place a wing block like that. Okay, there we go. So that actually works. So now I have a parachuting, uh, parachuting stump. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So yeah, that was how I did it in the level. And then I did something like this. And there's all kind of little neat tricks you can do with that. Why a wing block? So, okay. So if you just have a, can you do it without that? Oh, I guess you don't even need a wing block, but okay. So this will actually lead me into the shell setup. You don't need a wing block to do this apparently, but uh, this will lead me into the shell setup. So if you want to make a shell, this happens a lot because the reason why people want shells is because a lot of Kaizo levels will have a setup where they give you a shell like this, right? And they're like, do a shell jump. And all you have to do is put on the shell mitt and then jump on the spikes and then just go, right? Uh, that's happened. I can't even count how many times that's happened in the level. If you want to prevent that, uh, you can make a shell by making a setup like this and giving the player a shell like so. So now the player has a shell here instead of a helmet and you can make them do whatever you want them to do with it. The reason why this is a wing block is because the wing block moves up and crushes the bomb. I can actually show that like this, I think. One second. I do this. There you go. So it kind of drifts into it and you can actually make like a fuse shorter or longer. Yeah, the shell will eventually wake up. Yes, it will wake up. Uh, well, this same thing works in uh, in Super Mario World. It doesn't have to be SMB3. This also works in Mario World. Um, there's something else I want to show here as well with this. So yeah, that same thing works. One thing to note though, do you notice how the shell, like this time the shell went to the right. With this setup, the shell is going off the bomb, the explosion to the right. So the where the shell is standing on the block matters a lot. But if I do this, it's going to go to the left. See, now the shell went to the left and in some levels that can introduce like jank. So you can't, you kind of want to be aware of that. One thing you can do, I think, is you can drop a wiggler down with it. I think this is how they do it. I've never actually done this before because it's never really an issue for me. Oops. I'm trying to move you down. So if you drop a wiggler, uh, let's move this real fast. Okay, so now the shell, uh, now the shell will always be on the right, no matter what I do, because see how the Koopa's trapped on the right side of the block. Um, that means the shell will always go right if you want it to do that. Um, so yeah, you have to play with setups to make it work the way you want it to. But this is just like the easiest way. So now the Koopa shell is trapped on the left. Um, you have to kind of play with these setups yourself to make them work how you want them to. Uh, how do you make a one-time on-off switch? Uh, I'll, I'll cover, I'll cover some stuff in just a minute. So, um, and there's a lot of different ways you can make shell setups as well. Like that's just one way. Um, you could also do something like this, I think. Let's see. There's a lot of different ways to make shell setups. Let's, let's just say, let's just say that this would also give you a shell. Uh, something like this. Have I gone into boo tech? I have not. So that also gives you a shell. There's a lot of different ways to make stuff work. So is there a 3D world shell setup? Uh, sure. Go make one. Whenever you go to 3D world, it resets everything just because 3D world is so different. But uh, the same principle should work in 3D world. Uh, let's get some hard blocks. Block here. If you're making a level, I would highly recommend testing uh, a lot of different ways to move to make sure that your shell is landing consistently exactly where you want it to. Yeah, this will work exactly the same. Yep. 
Same thing. Right, a pow on a ceiling can also release a shell. Yeah, so this also works. Exactly the same. Can you have helmet in 3D world? There's no helmets in 3D world. There's no beetles. There's no helmets in 3D world. You can also do this with not just with not just uh, shells. You can also do this with bombs. And I actually do this in my level, the Terminator. If you want a lit bomb. So now I've just given the player a lit bomb. Um, you can also do that with bombs if you feel like it. Can you shell jump here? Yeah, you can shell jump in... in um, you can shell jump in 3D world. Hmm. Can you separate a Cooper from its shell in SMW with a setup? Um, I think the only way to quickly get a Koopa out of a shell is to jump on it. Otherwise, you'd have to wait the timing for the Koopa to climb out of it. So, no, I don't think you can do that. You're hoping for a big cat DLC for 3D World? I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can show. I mean, like, once again, there's a lot of... I saw a cool setup in a level Carl was playing the other day where it was something like this. You had a bomb here, I think. I don't know exactly what it was. I think it was something like this. And it was another way of giving the player a bomb. I think it was like this. So this one was like proximity based and that that gave a bomb like that, which I thought that was really cool. I'm not sure exactly how it worked in the level. But yeah, I just gave the player another bomb. So there's like, like I said, there are lots and lots of different ways to make setups like that. The basic principle is that you have a block get activated or hit by something. Um, so yeah. Thwomp one below. I move it down one. What would that do? Oh, that just makes, that just makes the bomb wander off. <laughs> It looks like that. It, it looks like it actually did make it go a little higher. Did that actually make it go up? I think it made it go up slightly. Interesting. I wonder why that's the case. What a yeah. You could probably put, you could probably overlay a cloud block like this. So you put the cloud behind the bomb. Ah, see now the bomb is waiting for you here. So this this would not be a timing base. The one I showed earlier with the blocks is based on timing. This one is based on your proximity to the thwomp is what would make the bomb get activated. Uh, I want to show one other thing here real fast. One other thing real quick, and then I'll get, oh, we'll take a new question. Can I make a calculator level with Mario Maker 2? I'm sure it's possible. Uh, you can't, you can, I can't. <laughs> I don't know how to make a fucking calculator. Another thing you can do, like, let's say you want to have an enemy. Let's say you want to have an enemy here for a jump, but you don't want that enemy to move, right? You can place the enemy on a muncher, like so. And now this beetle will never move because it's stacked on it. So if you want to have like a Goomba sitting somewhere and like the enemy jumps off of it or something, you can just have it sitting on a muncher and now it won't move at all. Uh, also, let's say you want, let's say you don't want a shell set up. You want to actually just let the player get the shell themselves. If you place a cloud behind the muncher, like so, See how the enemy is still stacked right there? But now I can get this and this won't kill me no matter what I do. This is like an easy way of giving the player an enemy or a shell and that's like not gonna do anything. So a pretty useful little setup you can do and the muncher won't kill you at all. It also prevents the beetle from moving, so. Someone asked about a one time only on off switch. All right, Um. I mean, isn't that really easy? A one-time on-off switch? How to activate stuff from outside the screen? I don't understand your question. You have to be a little bit more specific. Can you make a giant spiny spin right side up? You want a giant spiny to... Uh, let's see. So let's get rid of this. And you want it to spin right side up. Well, I mean, you can't really make a spiny spin period, can you? The only way you like, because you can't, you can't grab a shell. The only way you can grab a spiny is if you hit the shell beneath it. So I don't think that's possible now. 
How do you put munchers upside down? You cannot put munchers upside down. Will the beetle get stuck if he walks over a muncher? No, he'll just walk right past it. He does not get stuck. He'll just walk right over it. Can a note block activate an on off switch? No, it can't. Can you make a custom height vine pop out of a question block? Uh, no, no. But if you wanted to control the heights of a vine, all you have to do is like make something that stops it, right? Every time I watch Mario Maker on Twitch, uh, literally every time I watch Mario Maker on Twitch, it is always a sky tree. And I don't know why. <laughs> So you could just stop. So that stops the vine, obviously. And then this one will just continue forever. So pretty easy. Could you put a vine behind a key door? Uh, and if you have a key, you're unable. So I, I heard, I don't know. Um, key checks are not. Um, I don't know a lot about key checks because I've never really made a level with it. A key check is something like to make sure you didn't get a key, right? And I've heard that key checks in Mario Maker 2 are like broken or something. I don't know. Um, so I'm not I'm not super familiar with uh, key checks. I don't know if you can. Can you put a vine behind a door? I don't think you can. Oh, it looks like you can. What does this actually do? Can you go in this door? <laughs> that looked weird. Look at that, there's like a frame. Look at that, there's a frame where Mario starts climbing up. That's really interesting. You can hold diagonal to bypass key checks. Interesting, so is that why, is that why it's broken? Ah, so that, that that's the same thing. So you can, you can, you can refuse to enter this door, I guess, if you just hold diagonal. Interesting. I did not know that. Can climb the vine with a joystick you can jump well the idea is that jumping would activate a kaizo block like there's tons of levels that have done this to make sure you didn't get a key or something like this so you put an invisible block here but apparently this is broken and it doesn't work anymore so like the idea is i'm trying to make sure the player didn't have a key but now i can just do this right in old in Mario Maker One, if you if you pressed up, you would you would go in the key door here and you would die. So I guess Mario Maker Two now key checks are broken because of that. What controller is best for level design? Whatever you feel like. What about a pipe? Um, a key check for a pipe? I don't think that would work because pipes don't require keys. Use the key teleportation blocks. How do you do a fire? Oh, you know what? Somebody asked me earlier. I, I don't really think that this is... Uh, I think this still qualifies as an enemy setup. Uh, let's try to figure this out. So if we want to do like a fire flower check. Um, let's go ahead and make a fire flower check real fast. Somebody asked me this earlier. It's actually good that we're answering this. So we have a bomb. Um, let's make our bomb stand still, I guess. Will this stand still or no? Will it walk off? That just walks off. Let's make this a big muncher. Okay. We're just making uh making a fire flower check real fast. So we have a big bomb here. Whoops. Big bomb here. Um I think this is actually eas easily accomplished with one ways as well. Where's a one way at? I mean, like this. I don't know if I want to muncher on top of it or not. I think you can just jump on this. Yeah. You can definitely just jump on that. Uh, let's see. I have made these before. It's just it's been a little while. So that blew that up immediately. Um, I don't think jumping on it would help you here. So, so I'm unable to jump on this at all. So this is like one, one way you can do it and that will blow it up. 
Uh, I don't know if you even really need this. You could probably just do this, right? So the muncher, once you activate the bomb, the muncher automatically explodes it, and then you can you can walk over it like so. And you can make it. You can also just make it fall in the lava if you wanted. So yeah, you can duck jump past hidden blocks. Can you use a mouse to make a level? No, cannot do that. I mean, a fire flower check isn't that hard. You could also just put enough enemies in a row where the only way to get through is to, um, is to kill them with a fire flower. So can you make small and small only entrance pipes? I don't think you can anymore because, uh, because of the way pipes work now. Pipes nowadays, if you, uh, hang on, where's the pipe? I don't think you can do that anymore. So in Mario Maker 1, you could do this, and this would work, right? I don't think you can't do this anymore in Mario Maker 2. Uh, let's go back real fast. So let's go back to small. So this would be, in Mario Maker 1, this would be a check, and you could enter this pipe if you were small. In Mario Maker 2, you cannot enter this pipe. You cannot enter it, no matter what you do. Um, a pipe needs to have two entries to open. So there's no, there's mo there's no way to make sure the player is small or big when they go in the pipe. That's one of the changes from Mario Maker 1 to 2 for whatever reason. Can't you use a saw? Uh, yeah, you could use a saw. A saw doesn't prevent it. Um... A saw does not prevent you from entering a pipe. So you could you could do something like uh, like this. I'm pretty sure you couldn't enter this pipe big, but you can still enter the pipe. Yes. There's a lot. Like I said before, there's a lot of different ways to do stuff in Mario Maker, and I'm I'm by no means the best editor in Mario Maker. I, my levels are pretty fucking basic, all things considered. So let's actually try being big and try getting in. Fuck you, bitches. I guess that's out. <laughs> well, we learned something. Yeah. Check that out. Oh, shit. How do I do that? <laughs> that's really cool. That's pretty sick. <laughs> I like that a lot new mechanic yeah you can make the player enter on a spike and that would make sure that they're small well it would make sure that they take damage at least right so yeah was that iframes i think that's new f i think that's like new tech i guess because i don't think you could do that in mario maker one i guess that's new tech it's it's amusing anyway right a spike floor would work Put a conveyor on the ground. Right, right. There's all different. I'm sure there's there's a million ways to prevent that. Could you make a one tile hallway at the other side of the spike? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, there's all different ways to do something. Uh, I I'm, I can't show you every configuration of D cheese and possibilities. Same with shell setups, right? I'm just showing you like one way to do it pretty much. I'll let you guys figure it out. Can you take damage while going into the pipe? No, I think you're invincible. Uh, did you know adding a helmet to your character while editing permanently upgrades your character? Oh, so you're saying because I've never given... Hang on. I think that's something I didn't know. So, okay, if you're in the editor, if you hold on Mario, you can give yourself power-ups, right? But I didn't know that you had to actually unlock it. So if I do this, now that will permanently appear. I actually did not know that. I, I didn't know that. Interesting. So, yeah. But anyway, if you want, let's say you want Mario in the level. If you're like, I'm going to make a level around the cape. I think if you do that, then you'll just, when you start the level, you'll just, will, will you automatically start with the cape when you make this level or no? Let's, uh, we're going to save this and then try to upload it and see if that gives you the cape or not. Uh, exclamation points. 
I don't think it does. When you play, you don't think it... Yeah, I, I want to test that, though. I want to test it. Time to upload, boys. Level complete. Ship it. <laughs> we'll see. Well, let's see if we have the cape or not. Okay, you do not. You do not have it. So if you want... That just gives it to you in the editor. It doesn't actually give it to you. But if you want to give the player a cape... I guess, well, no, you can't, you can't overlay things on the start anymore, can you? You can't put anything here, so, yeah. In Mario Maker 1, you could just put the cape right here where you start. And, uh, if you put the cape here, you would just automatically get it when the level starts. Can't do that in Mario Maker 2 anymore, so now you have to place the cape somewhere else for you to get it. So I guess that's a change from Mario Maker, from, uh, from Mario Maker 1. Okay, here's a good question. Uh... How this is going to be a really short one. How do I start the level from the beginning in the editor? We kind of we kind of ran over <laughs> new question. Whoops. I lost my question. Oh, it's flipped upside down. One second. Sorry, guys. This is more for YouTube than it is for you guys. All right, how do I start the level from the beginning in the editor? That's easy. You can see in the, let me move me because I'm kind of blocking it. And move me up. So you see that play button? You guys are probably just pressing minus to test stuff in your level. But if you're having a level that you need to test from the beginning, which is a lot of levels need to be tested from the beginning, all you have to do is hold the minus button. You see how that little timer is filling up? Hold the minus button and eventually it will play from the beginning. The screen will go black and it'll start the level from the very beginning. So all you have to do one more time is to hold the minus button. That's how you start from the beginning, which I'm actually really glad they, they kept that. Really, really glad they kept that. Can you hold the button on the display? I have no idea. I have never even made, I've never even attempted to make a level with the touch screen. It says the minus button. I think it's the minus button. Yeah, it's the minus button. I use a PlayStation 4 controller, so for me, all my buttons are different. My minus button is the share button. <laughs> can you make levels from right to left? Uh, sure. Yeah, you could You could make levels from right, right to left. That wouldn't be hard. If you want to make a level from right to left, you, you would definitely have to use like a sub world or something. But if you wanted to do that, um, you just put your warp pipe on the right side and make the player go left. But you can't like, you can't like switch the level orientation. Like the axe will always be on the right side of the level. So there's nothing really you can do about that. This would be the easiest way to do it is to go into a pipe and then have the player go left, which isn't that bad. A little one pipe transition at the start of the level is not a big deal. Why can't you put items in the beginning of the level? I mean, that's a question for Nintendo, not for me. Uh, you can't, you can no longer play stuff here at the start. Um, like if I grab this, like I want to put this here. You see how there's a little X here? You cannot place anything here. You can't place power-ups. You can't place enemies. You can't place blocks. You can't do any of this. It does not work. Oh, dude, I, Badoko, I have like 5 million screenshots. <laughs> but probably for multiplayer, yeah, that might be the reason why. But I, you just, I'm just explaining that you just cannot do that. That's the versus mode rectangle. Yeah, I, I assume you can. How do you make your levels more aesthetically pleasing? Um, that's kind of like a like a, a subjective question, not like we're just talking about like objective. How do you do things? I think for me personally, for my own taste and aesthetics, I want to be able to see where the fuck I'm going. So if you're just adding, if you're just like doing shit like this, like a, a ton of people think aesthetics mean putting checkerboard down and putting like a bunch of these ever can you even overlay these anymore you can like this doesn't look good to me this just looks like shit and then they're like oh yeah this looks great and now i'm gonna put some mushroom platforms here oh yeah this level looks beautiful i don't like levels that look like this fuck levels that look like this honestly uh, i want to be able to see where the fuck i'm going that's what i want to see so for me aesthetics take a back seat to being able to see where i'm going and what i'm doing that sort of thing so is there a way to turn off the water, lava, and levels? Uh, if you're in the forest mode, 
Um, like, I can't turn off the lava in a castle. Like, I can't do that. It's the same with a forest. If I go to this to forest mode, I can't turn off the water. Um, I mean, if you never move the water, you know, it doesn't make a difference. But you can, like, put spikes on it so the water isn't a factor. But I can't, like, turn it off. It's just going to be there no matter what. I actually explained that earlier, Nero, and this will be going on YouTube. It'll also be timestamped so you can go directly to it. I'm hoping to get this on YouTube either today or tomorrow. So I don't want to explain stuff all over again. Is there a way to build a contraption similar to the tight ropes in Grand Pool 2? So going too fast will activate it. I don't think so. <laughs> that's going to take a different creator than me to figure out how to make tight ropes in, in this game. I don't think that's possible. I mean, if you're just controlling how fast... Is this Jason dude just taking all of my world records? Is that what he's fucking doing? He's playing every level I have the world record in. That's like the 10th time I've seen that. <laughs> Who the fuck is this Jason asshole? Fuck off, man. I'm going to take all your world records. How do you make a course pop up in multiplayer? I don't fucking know, dude. I haven't made any multiplayer levels. How do you make naked pipes? Uh, easy. You just do what I did. Just place a pipe. Is there a mechanism that requires the player to hit the blocks in a certain order to progress? Uh, I don't think that would be super hard to create, especially with on-off blocks. Uh, on-off blocks are really incredible in how much you can do with them. They're really, really incredible. Like, here's, here's a simple setup, right? Like, you can hit this once. Wow, that... Oh, so this, this is the... This is the lethal ejection setup, isn't it? Yeah, that's the lethal ejection setup. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty simple, straightforward, right? Let's do this. You can, you have to hit one block to the other. Are small pipes exclusive to SMB3? Yeah, they're not, they're not pipes though in SMB3. That's just the ground tile. It's just here, it's just this right here. See, those are, these aren't small pipes. These are just ground in SMB3. So, yeah. Which is a really cool aesthetic, honestly. I like it a lot. But that's just ground tiles. That's not small pipes. Is there any way to limit a pipe spawner from spawning enemies infinitely? Okay, let's actually spend a little bit talking about pipes. Because I feel like... Um, I feel like a lot of people don't understand pipes right now. And that's a question I get a lot. Question. How do new pipes work? Okay. Uh, let's talk about new pipes for a little while. I'm actually glad that there's so many questions because I was worried that we weren't going to have enough to talk about. And now it's apparent that there's a shitload to talk about. <laughs> All right. So as you know, you can make pipes spawn enemies. Um, all you have to do to make a pipe spawn an enemy is to take an enemy, place in the pipe, and now in the level, an enemy will get pooped out of this, right? Um, however, in Mario Maker 2, something they added, which is really, really nice, is you have multicolored pipes. So let's go add these pipes. We have four different pipes here. And we're going to, let's actually separate them a little bit more. Okay, we're going to make a little bucket. Of these to catch. Just to show off what we're going to do here. All right, we're going to... So if you hold A on a pipe, you can actually change the color of the pipe. And if you notice, there's these little arrows on all of the pipes. And the arrows indicate how fast enemies will come out of the pipe. So blue has one arrow. Enemies come out of the pipe very slowly. This is the normal speed. This is the normal pipe. It's got two arrows. This is like normal speed. This one, you can... Uh, this one's like green, I guess, or whatever. I'm colorblind, sorry. Uh, this one, it comes out a little bit faster and red is the fastest. And if we like watch here, you can see like they'll all start, but then you see how red you can see which one is going to fill up first, right? So you can actually like see the speed happening right here. It's yellowish, whatever. You can kind of see it happening. Uh, we're, we're actually, that's actually the sprite limit, I think already, or we're close to it. Um, this might be another way of showing it. Hang on. Where's a, where's a muncher? This might be a better way of showing it off than, than spinies. 
So the first one will always be the same when they're all on screen, but then you see how the red, see how that, see how they're, they're, they're going off one after the other. <laughs> yeah, it's like frequency, I guess, more than speed, but yeah. Pretty interesting. That's one of the best, that's one of the coolest things they've actually added in Mario Maker, I think, in Mario Maker 2. There's a per pipe limit of 10 enemies. Is that true? Huh. I didn't know that. But yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, pipes are pretty awesome in Mario Maker 2. They're also really nice just for aesthetics, honestly. Just having different colored pipes is pretty cool. I like the semi-solids in this theme. Uh, wish you got some sort of visual stat or... Yeah, it'd be nice if they showed how much ground you have left. Or how, much, how many enemy sprites you have left. It'd be really nice to know that, wouldn't it? Uh, thank you for the bits. Sorry, alerts are off currently. I will turn off. I will turn on alerts as soon as we're like done with this. I just didn't want alerts going off the whole time. How do you make one-way pipe mechanisms? Uh, well, I don't know what you mean by mechanism, but you you can no longer make like um, if you want to make like a pipe, you can go through. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Can you have different colored narrow pipes for the ground? No, I can't control the ground color here. I can't do that. Doesn't work. What do, what do slopes look like in this theme actually? Oh my God, these are these are hideous. Oh, that's actually, it's cool when it's single actually. I like that a lot. That's really neat looking. But if you do like this, oh, that's gross. Oh, I hate that. That's gross. I do like the, sl the slanted pipe on its own. I want to make an SMB3 uh, pipe. I want to make an SMB3 forest level. I think that'd be fun. I'm going to do that sometime. Yeah, I, I covered that earlier, Joey. I covered that earlier. I showed it off. It's really easy to make a pipe. You go through one way, but can't go back. It's really, really easy. Do I have any tips on how to make tracks effective? I need more specific, like in what way? How do you force the player to slide down slopes? Uh, I mean, you could just have an enemy. Don't, don't I, I've seen this set up in like a million levels. Hang on. So there's no way past these icicles if you're walking. So they'll kill you. But if you butt slide, I've seen that set up in a bunch of levels. So, and you can probably do that with different kinds of enemies as well, like spinies or whatever. Just something that you have to kill with the butt. Do you know if you can stop a vine on a track from growing without stopping it from moving? A vine on a track to stop it from growing. So you have like a vine and a block on a track and you're trying to stop it from growing before. Does the vine just go through everything? I've never actually made a level like this because I've played this level in 100 man like 15 million times. So I've never made a level with anything remotely similar. <laughs> I don't I don't think so. I think it'll just go all the way through every time. So like if we have a ceiling, if this if this vine were not on a track, uh it would stop. But yeah, it's just going to Now, I don't think there's a way to do that. Um I think you can stop it if I do this. Man. There's a spiny shellman. I think this would stop it. So yeah, that stops it, but it also stops it from moving. So um, that's pretty much your only option. Well, if you blow it up, it would also stop the vine. There's actually a really cool Mario Maker one level by David Pinkston uh, that does that. Yeah, there's, there's a really cool Mario Maker one level by David Pinkston that's all about that. Well, another well, another item on a track interact with the vine. Well, nothing, nothing interacts with the vine. <laughs> like nothing at all in the entire game interacts with the vine. They're just kind of things on tracks kind of exist on their own plane of existence. So, how can you use a checkpoint multiple times in a pink coin level? Uh, that's actually a really good question. All right, let's uh, let's switch over and let's talk about that. Uh, how do you make an infinite checkpoint level, I guess. Is that the question, I guess? Let me uh, do this. So I, I've only made one infinite checkpoint level. Thankfully, my infinite checkpoint level works really well. 
Uh, let's go ahead and... Do I need to reset? Let's just get rid of all this. Okay, if you're making an infinite checkpoint level, you are definitely going to need a subworld. You're definitely going to need a subworld. There's probably a way to do it. Well, no, you know, you definitely need a subworld. That was right. Okay, so we're going to place a spike here. Oh, dude, my controller keeps dying. Why is my controller dying? Hello? I think my controller has shit the bed. Yeah, my controller has shit the bed. Abort, abort. I need my other controller. Occasionally my PlayStation controller just like, just like revolts on me. Hang on one second. My PlayStation controller ate shit. All right, I guess I gotta switch to my Switch Pro. I need a new controller. My PlayStation 4 controller just doesn't want to work sometimes. I don't know why. Okay. So infinite checkpoint level. You're gonna need to use a subworld. Let's go ahead and set up, let's set this up real quick. And you're gonna want checkpoints. You're gonna need both your checkpoints. You can only place two checkpoints in a level. Where are checkpoints? There we go. Um, so we're gonna put a pipe here. We're gonna have a subworld here. Let's make it horizontal. I'll show you the principle on how on how this works. And we're gonna put a checkpoint here. Uh, so you can only have two checkpoints, like I said. Uh, to make an infinite checkpoint level, you probably need to use the pink coins. Pink coins are essential to the process. So we're gonna put a pink coin here. Let's go to the main world. We're actually gonna show to, we're actually gonna, well, I can't upload it, can I? I guess I have to play it in course bot. All right, uh, so let's uh, save this real fast. Well, I can't build a touchscreen because I, I build on stream, so that's not an option for me. Right, I, I only play, I only really play Mario Maker on stream. <laughs> All right, so let's go to my course bots. How do I play levels from course bot? Oh, here we go. All right, so we're gonna play my crappy infinite checkpoint level 222. Two, two. Uh, play, just play it. So you don't, if you just play the level, I think you can get checkpoints and it won't ding you. All right, so we get our red coin. Uh, we get a checkpoint and we die, right? Let's say we we die in the level. You'll notice that if you look at my red coin count, see how I still have that red coin? Um, so red coins survive even when you die. And that's the ultimate principle behind the red coin level. Um, so you can bring red coins with you. This is the other principle is that once you get one checkpoint, the other one doesn't count anymore. So you kind of alternate your checkpoints. If you see my level Braveheart, uh, Braveheart has the two checkpoints that you trade between. Um, so yeah, right. We're also going to talk about safety coins. So basically like you do a section, you get a red coin and then you save your progress. I don't think I'm explaining this very well. I think I'm doing a bad job. All right, it's important to note for red, to, for red, for pink coin levels that if you gain, so like we just got the key. Oh, I, I didn't, I don't have a key, a key door. <laughs> God damn it. Um, it's hard to show this without showing like an actual level. It's a, it's a pretty complicated thing to actually do. If you don't have a key door, it won't save. You won't keep your key. All right, let's go to core spot. Oh, did I save? Hang on, let's save. Do little rooms. I mean, I, it would take me it would take me a long time just to actually like make the level. It's easier to like, I guess this kind of explains it a little bit. I don't know. It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing you're asking me to show you real quick. Yeah, I, I should load up Braveheart. That's actually a good, a good point. I should load up Braveheart. All right, so get the red coin. And if I die with, so I die with the red coin and I didn't, I didn't hit the checkpoint, right? You're going to see that my red coin count resets. If I get the red coin, hit the checkpoint and now die, you're going to see that I actually still have my red coin. So yeah, saved my progress, spawn from the checkpoint. Okay. So let's go here. We gain our key. We saved our game, right? Here's the problem with red coin levels. If I die now, let's say I die now, um, you're going to see what's going to happen to me. 
I no longer have my key and all of the red coins have reset. So red coins save when you get a checkpoint. Keys do not. Keys do not save. Um, so you want to be sure in most red coin levels, don't follow what I did. In most red coin levels, do not kill the player once they've gotten the key. You pretty much want your key door to poop them directly onto the axe. Do not do that. Where do you come in with the red coins in these scenarios? Here, let me uh, let me actually load up my uh, my level. We're going to go to the core spot. And I'm gonna go play Braveheart quickly, and hopefully, I can get to the checkpoint pretty fast. <laughs> this is my level uh, Braveheart that I made. It is an infinite checkpoint level. It might take me a minute to get to the checkpoint. Just uh, bear with me here. So this is an infinite checkpoint level. There are two rooms before. Uh, you get to the first checkpoint. Ah, it's going to take me a minute just to get there. <laughs> yeah, do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. Yeah, we might, maybe, maybe Ricky can cut it out so we quickly get there. You can't get in the bomb door. Dude, I suck. I haven't played this level in a little while. It'll take me a minute. It'll take me a minute. This is a tough level. This is by no means an easy level. Fuck. <laughs> well, I can't... If I get there with the editor, it's... It will be less of a good explanation and demonstration. That's the problem. No, drop it. God, I hate this controller so much. Just watch me. No, it won't take me an hour to get to the checkpoint. It might take me like five minutes. Yeah, I'm using a pro controller right now because my PlayStation 4 controller is possessed. I need a, I need a new controller, I think. Dude, I fucking, I hate this controller so much. Still uploading this level. <laughs> Actually, hang on. Can I switch back to my PlayStation controller? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try switching back real fast. Because this controller is not going to cut it, I think. I'm going to switch back real quick. All right, please don't be possessed. Back to PlayStation. One hour tops. <laughs> Six hours later. You're a bit though. I need I need a new controller. I don't know what controller to get. I need something with sticks because I do so much creation. I, I can't go pocking. I can't go pocking. Just get another PS4 controller. I don't think there's anything wrong with my PlayStation 4 controller. I think it's the like adapter or something. I don't know. Oh, come on. I hope to God I'm never, I'm never the guy in Twitch chat who's correcting the streamer's pronunciation of things. I really hope I never become that guy. <laughs> Oh my god, I suck at this level now. Actually, Barb. You think I'd be good at this level after how much I played it? What the fuck, man? God damn it. This level's the Dark Souls of Mario. Someday we're going to continue our explanation of how to do this. I just have to get there. <laughs> I can't wait to die to the door entry. There we go. Okay. 
So, have our checkpoint. So, when we have our checkpoint, no matter what, when we die, we will respawn at this checkpoint. So, no matter what, we will respawn at this checkpoint. Um, so, let's actually do one of the rooms. So, once you're in this room, you can't go back. We're going to complete this room real fast. All right, room completed. Your reward is the red coin. Now, when you get that checkpoint, so I've gotten the checkpoint, now I'm in a new set of rooms. So now we're gonna go to this room and we are going to die. Okay. The checkpoint's gonna respawn us here. And we still have our red coin. We still have it. So that means our progress is saved. I never have to play that room ever again because I got the red coin. And even if I went back and if I did that room again, there's no new red coin. That red coin is just gone. It's gone forever. So we're going to try to beat this room. Is dying necessary for the demonstration? Okay, so we got this red coin. So there's no point in going in this room because we already got that red coin. Right? And again, so it, it doesn't matter how many times I die in these sections. Every time I die, I still keep my red coins. So these levels, these for just just as a fair warning, making these levels and uploading them is a royal pain in the ass. Yeah, I'll explain the safety coin as well. I kind of already did, but I can explain it again. How is the checkpoint resetting? You can only have one checkpoint at a time. So every time I go through this pipe, I'll get a new checkpoint. See? Yeah, I have to beat every room without dying. Yeah, I've already done that, though. So you can only have one checkpoint at a time. So what that means is that... Uh, yeah, every time I go through the pipe, I'll get a new checkpoint. Right. I know there's I'm passing the checkpoint. Must be real. Yeah, it was a pain uploading this level. <laughs> I also, in case the player didn't want to do a room, I allowed the player to go between the rooms and play whatever rooms they wanted. Is there a max number of usable pipes? Yes, it's like eight or 10 or something. Do not throw fish at the player. That is not a good thing. <laughs> I guess while we're playing it, we may as well just beat the level. It's a helper fish. All right, we only have one more room. Which room? Oh, this is the room I haven't done. Right, you can only have one checkpoint per world. So you can have one in your main world and you can have one in your sub world and that's it. Alright, so you'll notice I have all if, if you go through the rooms now if you look at all the rooms you can go through you see how there's no more red coins There are no more red coins at all All the red coins are gone see that so now there's only one coin left in the level. There's only one coin left Why did I do this one when uploading all right, so I have the now you'll notice I have the key This is gonna be really important again to make absolutely clear Go through the key door one thing you never want to do when the player has the key is kill the player. You do not want to kill the player. This is why you don't want to kill the player right here. All right, I died. I want an excuse to play the level. So now all of the red coins have reset because I lost my key. So now I've lost all progress in the level and I have to do everything all over again. So do not do that. Do not do that in your, in your red coin levels. 
Unless you're me. If you're me, then that's different. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Do not kill the player with the red coins. So I hope I hope I explained how to make an infinite checkpoint level like a little bit. I hope that that made that a little bit clear. Um, there won't be a building with Barb episode for this level just because it took way too long. But uh, yeah. So the safety coin, this is the safety coin right here. This is the safety coin. So when you beat the level, I can't like, I can't get that coin and then go back out. So you can't get the coin. The reason why this coin is there is so that you don't accidentally get the key and die. That's why this coin is here. So when you finally get the key, it has to be in here. And the only way, the only way to die in this room is to go like out of your way to kill yourself. So that's the safety coin. How do you make cannons that spawn off screen? I don't know what you're talking about. How do you checkpoint three? I don't know. I, I know how to do infinite checkpoints. I don't know how to make three checkpoints. Uh, okay, I think that's good. Let's go back to the editor, I think. Yeah, it's a setup, I think, pioneered by Ghost Sagan in Mario Maker 1. And uh, I just used it here in Mario Maker 2. It's I, I didn't invent that. That was, made, that was a thing from Mario Maker 1. Uh, okay, so somebody was asking about wind conditions. Why don't we do... Why don't we take a look at wind conditions? I haven't fucked with wind conditions very much. How do you... Create... Wind conditions. Let's go ahead and answer this question. Alright, how do you make wind conditions? So, to have wind conditions, you go over here to your clear condition right here. It's beneath the timer. And before you've even made anything at all on the level, there's some things that are possible, like reach the goal without taking damage and reach the goal without landing after leaving the ground. But if you want to make additional uh, additional win conditions, you have to add things into your level. So let's like add some coins. We're going to add some coins. And let's add some ground. How to create win conditions. All right, so now that we've added coins, we can go over here to our win conditions and it'll actually tell you parts. So reach the goal after grabbing all 21 coins. You can actually change that to at least, so you can lower the amount. So let's say grabbing five coins. So you can edit this yourself. Um, if you want like, okay, so let's say, all right, you know what, fuck that actually. Let's make a win condition where you have to kill, kill Gombas. Where's Gamba? There we go. So you have to, you have to place the things first. I think that's might be where people get confused. Reach the goal after defeating all three Gombas. Reach the goal after defeating at least one Gamba. So like these, this you have to place the item and then go to your clear condition to find that out. You can also do something like this. Like if you add a propeller, add the propeller, go back to your win condition. Now you can go over to status, reach the goal as propeller Mario. So then once you get the propeller, you see the little check there. That means that you can now beat the level. Um, let's go ahead and bring this over. Bring our axe way over here. So like once you're in the level, this is what it looks like. So the axe just isn't here and the game actually tells you clear condition incomplete. It's, pronou it's pronounced Gamba. Uh, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Sorry, I have alerts off right now. I'm going to thank all the subs and bits and everything as soon as the tutorial is done. It's pronounced Goomb. <laughs> uh, okay, so you can only have one win condition at a time. You can't have multiple win conditions. Um, also, another thing to point, to point out with win conditions is you cannot have checkpoints with win conditions. Placing a checkpoint flag in your course will prevent you from setting clear conditions. So you can't have a checkpoint and a clear condition. And I think the reasoning why is that like, if you had a checkpoint and you had coins before it, but you got the checkpoint, it could make the level impossible. So you cannot have clear conditions and checkpoints. They are not compatible. It's just one of the weird limitations of Mario Maker. So can't do it. Goomber, the Gamba Samba. 
unsubbing for saying Gamba. You weren't a subscriber anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that is win conditions. Well, you can't keep your coins. So I don't know. That's just that's just a weird Nintendo thing that has nothing. That's just the way the editor works. You can't put checkpoints in with with, with uh, win conditions. Uh, you are welcome. Um, I've already covered how to make like one ways. There's a lot of different ways to make one ways in the game, like paths you can't go back. Like if you're talking about like in a strict level design sense, like you could just do this, right? Hang on, let's delete this. It's like, I want to make a, a place that the enemy, like when the, I say the enemy, I've been playing Total War a lot. Sorry, I keep saying the enemy. <laughs> All right. I want to make a one way. So once the player goes this way, they can't go back. Well, I just created a one way right here. See, now the player can't go back. There's a lot of different ways to do that. You can the, you can use one ways, like you can use doors. Um, you can do the same thing with a door. Like you can place one door here and one door here, right? Go through this door. Now I can't go back. See, there's no way back now. So yeah, there's lots of different ways to create one ways. How many enemies can you put on one screen? Uh, the same as you can throughout a whole level. Isn't it a hundred? A hundred enemy sprite limits, I think. How do you make the square spike block switch? You're talking about 3D world. How do you make the, the block switch? Uh, that's pretty easy. What are the big no's when creating a level? Uh, well, I'm not here to talk about how to make good levels. I'm not here to talk about that. I think if I did that, like... I think people are people. There's a lot of people who would be like, oh, Barb's trying to teach us. Wow, Barb fucking sucks. Like, I feel like I don't want to. I don't want to be like, this is how you make a good level. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I'm only here to show people how to do things. So um, in 3D World, 3D World's pretty unique. It has two different kinds of spikes. Uh, there's actually three different kinds of spikes. And let's, let's actually just talk about 3D World spikes for a second. Uh, one second. We'll go ahead and do this. What do 3D world spikes do? Let's go ahead and put that on there. All right. So there's three different kinds of spikes in 3D world. And we're going to show all three of them now. All right. So with with these spikes, the green you'll notice is on a timer. Um, so the spike hitbox will come in and out as a timer. The red one here is active constantly and the blue one is not active at all, right? All right, I'm yes, I am colorblind. But if you have an on off switch, this is an interesting thing about 3D world is you can switch the spikes like so. So you can switch these back and forth. Yes, 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 I know. So pretty cool, that's, that's entirely unique. That's entirely unique to 3D world. So let's say you wanted to make a setup and I did this in the Terminator and then a bunch of people a bunch of people have, you know, copied me because of what a what a genius I was. Uh, let's say we wanted to make something alternating. That'd be pretty easy. Uh, let's go ahead and create a quick setup. It's only take me a moment. We're gonna have our shell. All right, so the shell's gonna blow up. Uh, oh, you know, sometimes if you're making a shell setup like this, I don't even think the shell spawn now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> I think the Koopas are too high. Everything is too big in 3D world, like, like too large. Okay. Let's, um, this setup's gonna be absolute garbage. Setups like this take a lot of tweaking to make them work just right. Yeah, too large, not not too big uh let's see where is the shell gonna come out so i can add a conveyor here and we can add a sideways spring so we have to get the shell back into the state of being thrown because mario maker doesn't have a, sh a thrown shell state See, there we go. This is going to be inconsistent in terms of its speed, but this is a sim this is a simple way to do it. There's a lot of different ways. Once again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. 
but yeah that's that's one way to do it yeah this is not a this is not a consistent speed the one i had in uh in the terminator is going to be a, let's actually load up the terminator real fast uh the terminator the speed was consistent let's go and load up the terminator what are you consistent it means that the shell will speed up or slow down sometimes let's see let's go to the end of the terminator here so this setup will be consistent every time i think so yeah this setup is entirely it's just it's never going to change speed it's just going to keep going the exact same speed every time yeah this one's this is a consistent speed here can you just launch it between two yeah you could put a second switch if you wanted to how fast can it be turned on and off well if you wanted to make this faster you could just do this right See, now it's moving a lot faster <laughs> and it's up it's up to you to fuck with the timing to figure it out how you want to do it <laughs> all right good luck <laughs> is it only 3d world uh yeah this only works in 3d world I don't think that made it any faster. Re-upload with the change. <laughs> Make the block and on off switch. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, it's up to you to figure out what, what kind of timing you want uh, and figure out what's consistent. I would really recommend, um, I would highly recommend play testing your levels a lot and trying different things to try to break your setups. Yeah, there is, so there's, there is a maximum speed you can make these go off. You can't make them go off and on that fast. No, I haven't, Jarmo, what happens? Why can't you do this in SMW? Because these kinds of spikes don't, these two by two spikes that turn on and off, they do, they only exist in 3D world. They only, only exist in 3D world. How can you make a pipe for only big Mario? Force a damage boost to finish this animation yeah yeah probably you have to, if, if you're gonna do some kind of pipe check for big or small mario you need a damn you need to force the player to take damage somehow it's probably the only way to do it uh we talked we actually I actually talked about spikes a little bit earlier as well all right any other questions any other questions what other questions do we have uh we've been going for about two hours of tutorial are there any other questions i can answer I actually already answered how to get stumps. I already answered that. This will be on YouTube. Um, so it'll be a reference. I did a whole thing on enemy setups. By the way, this is the bomb setup in Terminator that gives you the bomb. That's how I gave the player the lit bomb. See this, this go, this wing block travels up into this and crushes it. And that's what gives you the lit bomb. Can I explain damage boost? Yeah, damage boost is just like a part where you force the player, like you have a mushroom and you forcefully take the mushroom away from that player no no there are no switch blocks so the only thing so 3d world on off switches only control spikes and conveyors um if you want to so if you place a conveyor and you want the on off switch to affect it you have to hold a on it and then you do this you go all the way to the right so now this is a conveyor that will switch with the on off movement all the themes have this by the way see how the light changes on the conveyor so smw smb1 smb3 they all have this conveyor uh and it's a pretty useful tool just hold the uh, hold it on the conveyor and then that will um that will force it to do this what are some ways you can make a bomb automatically explode after player input? Probably by making a muncher fall onto it will make it explode immediately. I've talked about the crush contraption for cape levels. What's the crush contraption? How do you make avoid the power up levels? You just have to make something that's impossible for big Mario to do, right? So let's make a really crappy avoid the mushroom level. I think it'd be a lot harder to do it in 3D world. Um, because 3d world, uh, Mario can, can crawl. He can like duck walk. I'll show you what I mean. 
So in 3D world, Mario can do this. So you probably can't make an avoid the... It'd be harder to make an avoid the power-up one in this game. Uh, it would be hard to do that. You can, I'm sure you can still do it, but it'd be more difficult. Let's go and... Yeah, you can also roll and do stuff, right? In Super Mario World, you can't. So if you wanted to make an avoid the mushroom level in Super Mario World, you could probably do something like this. I, I do not advise making this level, by the way, because this this sucks. <laughs> nobody nobody enjoys this. So we have our mushroom here. These levels have literally never been fun, right? So this is how you beat the level, right? But if you have a mushroom, you can get through. How would you get through here? You think you can get through this? I don't know, maybe. But yeah, that this is one way. Force the player to do that. Can you go through pipes while crawling? I don't think so. You just jump over the whole thing. And, well, in New Soup, I guess you can, because in New Soup, you can twirl. In SMB1, SMB3, and, NS and SMB, SMW, it's going to be a lot harder. There were setups like that. There were ways to get through setups like this in, uh, in Mario Maker 1. Like, uh, there was, there was this setup. Hang on. So like this, I think. Let's turn off Mario's trail real fast. So like in theory, only, only uh, small Mario can get through this, right? But there actually were ways in, S in Mario Maker to actually get through this. So you have to be careful with your setups. There we go. <laughs> oh, dude, I was doing it. <laughs> but yeah, there there are ways to do this. Yeah, this is possible. It's just annoying. Uh, I actually don't even know what even is RNG anymore. I don't even, uh, yeah, you can you could you could uh, prevent this with conveyors and stuff too. Is there a clear condition to reach the level as small Mario? I actually don't know. Is there? I guess not. I guess there isn't. Yeah, I guess not. Orator got amazing at that from Hundred Man. I know Foxen made a level that was like a consistency level at doing this. Yeah, it's just beat the level, right? Are there still incremental power-ups? Uh, yes, I believe that there are. Um, how do you make an incremental power-up? I think if we did this, and then let's say put this a cape. Okay, so that is now if you hold on it. So by if you hold on a power up here, you can make this an incremental power up. That's a good question, actually. So hold on a fire flower. See, so you can see the little mushroom symbol next to them. I just made those incremental power ups. So we'll go this way. And well, that didn't really work great, did it? They kind of fell and died. <laughs> So these will be, even though those were a cape and fire flower, uh, they will spawn as mushrooms, see? But if I, oh, let's actually, let's just start over. If I get this power up and then go around and then come this way, now they're both the power ups that they were before. So. They'll spawn in as mushrooms if you're small. Yes. Cheese. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions? What other questions you guys got for me? Can you bounce Yoshi on your cape? No. Are there damage blocks that Mario can go through with iframes? Blocks? No. There's like saws and things that you can go through if you have iframes. But there's no like block you can pass through. Spikes will stop you. I mean, the only the only block that will damage you is a spike, right? For terrain. But if you wanted to do something like that, you'd have to use a saw, I think. Setups for icicle jumps. Uh, I don't really know what you mean by setup, but you have to be kind of close to activate an icicle. Like, you can see it's shaking, but you're not activating it. You just have to be close to it, and then you can jump off of it. Um, one thing you can also do is you, I didn't know this until recently. Another way to activate icicles. I thought you had to be beneath them, 
you can activate icicles just by walking on them, which is pretty cool. Um, I only, I only, I didn't, I realized that embarrassingly late. So if you like step on these, you'll activate them, and you can do stuff like that, which is pretty neat. Advice for efficiently making testing an auto scroll lava level. Yeah, start from the beginning over and over. <laughs> How do you make an upside down level? I covered that earlier. That is nighttime underground theme. Are there slopes so steep you cannot climb up them? No, there's only two steep slopes. There's very steep and not very steep. Um, there's no other, there's no steeper option. That's just it. How do you create a poison mushroom? That is only in uh, the ground. The poison mushroom is only in this theme, ground at night. So go to ground, go to nighttime, and then open up your your little cursor here. And it'll be where the one-ups were. Right there. Rotten mushroom. That's the only way to make it. Yeah, nighttime ground. How do you place rainbows? Uh, rainbows. I like how we're getting the most important questions right now. <laughs> rainbows are a semi-solid, uh, semi-solid terrain right here. Where is it? And the air theme in Super Mario World. There you go. There's your rainbow for all your Nyan Cat levels. There it is. Can you have two different themes? You mean like two different levels? Is this what you're talking about? Or are you talking about this? If you wanted to have two themes, oh yeah, absolutely. Like you can make a pipe right here. And when you go out through the pipe, you can make it whatever theme you want it to on the other side. So on this side, we can make this, let's make this one ghost house day, right? There's no problem. So, Start over. So right now we're in low gravity. If we go through the pipe, we'll be in ghost day. So yeah. But I can't make the sub world like 3D world. You can't do that. That's not possible. I did explain the differences in pipes. I already did that. And this will be on YouTube, I promise. Can you build a machine that separates the Koopa from the shell? No, you can't really do that. You'd have to wait. Yes, I did, Fussy Bucket. Yes. Thanks for doing this day. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I don't mind doing this. I'm, I, I do the best I can to help people. And there's a lot of... There's, there's so many questions because a lot of people are kind of new to Mario Maker. Um, so I understand why there's a lot of questions on how to do things. And it's I'm, I'm happy to do it, you know? It doesn't, it's not that much effort for me. How do you add the moon to the left side menu? Uh, I covered that earlier, how to, how to get that. This will be coming out to YouTube. I just don't want to recover ground I've already explained. But basically, you just place the sun and then you hold A on it. Why do checkpoints? Okay, let's actually talk about checkpoints for a second. Let's, let's do this. What can you do with checkpoints? Why don't we show this? Let's uh, delete a bunch of stuff. So they made some changes to checkpoints in Mario Maker 2. Uh, you have a lot more options with checkpoints. In Mario Maker 1, if you place a checkpoint, uh, you just place a checkpoint and then no matter what, it gives you a mushroom, right? If you place a checkpoint in this game and then you hold A on it. Uh, is that how you do it? Oh, no, no, you don't. You don't hold A on it. You can grab a power up. Let's grab the checkpoint normally. See, I stayed as small Mario, right? But... If I drag this mushroom on the checkpoint, now the checkpoint will give me a mushroom. Like so. Or you can even do something even crazier. You can make, you can put this on the checkpoint now. This is pretty cool. Uh, one thing to remember though. So now the checkpoint gave me a star. Uh, one thing to remember though, is like when you die from the checkpoint, like if you die in the level, you do not get that mushroom or that star back. You don't get it back. It's a one-time deal. So when you respawn, that's it. That's all you can do. Can you put a poison mushroom on the checkpoint? I don't think so. Can you put a progressive check uh, thing on a power? I'm actually not sure. I don't think so. 
Maybe you can actually. Whoops. <laughs> Fucking low gravity, goddammit. Let us test. Let's take this out of fucking low gravity, please. I hate low gravity. I hate it. All right, so this should give me a mushroom. Let's see if this gives me a cape. You can apparently put progressive power-ups in checkpoints. I did not know that. I did not know that. So yeah, you can actually put progressive power-ups in checkpoints. Pretty cool to know. I did not know. Uh, if you get the checkpoint again, it yeah, I believe it should give it to you. Yeah, it should give you the progressive power up if you got it again. Can I discuss different kinds of indicators, especially how to use indicators in an area where the order of things to do is confusing? Um, I feel like that's for that's like crossing a line into like uh, it's debatable, and you know, like usually for me when I design stuff, it's it's very rare when somebody plays one of my levels and they're like, I have no fucking idea what to do. That's pretty rare. Um, so I don't think. I mean, like, so if you want to talk about indicators, this happened in Mario Maker 1, and there's, like, a lot of levels that did shit like this. Like, this is an indicator to throw to the right. This is an indicator to throw uh, up. Like, this is an indicator to throw down. Like, you can do shit like this. I prefer to make levels where you don't have to do anything like this. So, but you can do that. I just, I don't like the way this shit looks. Um... And my level is very rarely. So this this indicator means to throw left. This means to throw to throw right. This means throw up, and this means drop. So I don't know. You can do that if you want to. That's entirely up to you. Oh, there's also Z, right? That also works. That's like spin. Is there a list of all the indicators that are used somewhere? Uh, no, I don't think so. Are there any exclusive Cape Tech mechanics? Um. That's not really an editor question, like how to make something, but like there's things like spin flight, which that's existed in like every Mario with the cape has had spin flight where you can fly infinitely as long as you see, like I can fly forever by doing this. That's a cape tech, I guess. Um, I think sticky fly is in the game. I don't know how to set it up, but yeah, I think there is some kind of sticky flight in the game. You jump off a butt bumper. Yeah, but that's not really an editor question. What's the best cleanest way to put change on post without the change? I actually showed that earlier um, and this will be on YouTube pretty soon. So uh, I don't really want to cover it again. How was my pizza last night? Pizza was great. How do you make a claw drop an item? Uh, if you want a claw to drop something, you have to go underneath it. Uh, it's pretty much the only way to do it. Claws are uh, claw machines are based on proximity. So yeah, you have to go underneath it. Do I have any methods on how to brainstorm levels? Not really. I just kind of trial and error and find something that I think feels good. Uh, yeah, we'll probably just upload this raw. Yeah, probably. I don't think there's going to be... I don't think we're going to need much editing on this. How do you make music levels? I mean, I can show you the basic concept of a music level, but I can't make music. So I can show you how it's done at least. <laughs> Um, but this is this is more of a composer tutorial than it is a me tutorial, but I can like I can like show you basically how it's done All right, uh, let's see I'm gonna do this Um, so if you want to make a music level you want to have your note blocks um, if you hold on a note block you can get this color note block this color note block uh, causes, uh, so if you have one note block, let's see, we have this one, right? We're going to drop a, a mushroom on this one. That's actually perfect. Hang on. That's actually a perfect example. All right. Do you guys hear the difference here when they land on these different kinds of note blocks? See, so one makes a sound and one doesn't. So if we want to make beautiful music, And every enemy that lands on a note block is going to cause a sl It's like a, they're all different instruments, if that makes sense. You know, I think Yoshi eggs would actually be really good for one time musical notes because <laughs> you can only have two Yoshis on screen, right? I mean, don't 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 ask me. I don't make music levels. All right. So here's my song. Here is the song of my people. 
A lot of music levels also want a uh, silence on Mario so that the music doesn't interrupt. So what's the uh, what's the silence one? Which one's silence? Thunder music. Okay, silence. All right. So we're going to put the silent sound effect on Mario. And all right, here is the song of my people, guys. Oh, hang on one sec. So a lot of music levels will often, because the music is dependent on the camera scrolling, a lot of music levels will be an auto scroll level or they'll force you to hold right. Typically, they'll be auto scroll levels. All right, here we go. Here's my music level. <laughs> there you go. There's my music level. So you have to arrange, you have to arrange the note blocks with like where you want, where the notes have to play and uh, like what pitch they have to be and then what instruments you want. So it's a lot of work here uh, to do something like this. And I don't make music levels. I don't make music levels. There's also another way to make music levels. They're, they're, they're very time consuming and very complicated, but uh, yeah. Right, right. So I guess I can show that as well. Hang on, let's turn this off. Uh, let's go to these right here. This, if this isn't obvious, let's just go ahead and show it. Delete all of this. So these two note blocks, one is high and one is low. Uh, they're going to make a different pitch. Oops, I thought I turned you off. None. Thank you. Let's get a, let's get a different thing. I think the Yoshi noise isn't great. Let's actually get a muncher or something. All right. Why I thought I turned you off. None. God, I hate that it makes you hit okay. I hate that. All right, here we go. Does that kind of explain it better? So higher pitch, lower pitch. Again, I am not a musician. I'm not a musician, but... Um, <laughs> much better. Hot cross buns. I will never make a music level. <laughs> I'll never do it. But uh, yeah. I guess, I guess. All right, any other questions? Any other questions I can answer? I've been going for about two and a half hours of questions. Anything else I can answer? How was my pizza? Pizza was good. Is there a way to enforce the player are in their lane in a four-way mall? I've never made a multiplayer level. I don't know any of the rules on how to, I don't know how any of that works. I have not made it. Yeah, every enemy has a different sound. Yes. So like we place muncher, Uh, need stuff that doesn't move. With womp. What else we got? What else doesn't move? Pick a cannon. And we'll do this. Here we go. There you go. So everything makes different sounds. What sound do icicles make? I have no idea. When do you use snake blocks appropriately and how do you show effective indicators for them? I mean, that's a, that's a subjective question because everybody's gonna, everybody, some people are gonna have different opinions on how to make, you're basically asking me, how do I make snake blocks good? And um, that's not really what we're covering here. Uh, rails can help, yeah, rails help for sure. Difference between a spike and muncher hitbox? These days, I don't think there is any difference. I think they're I think they're incredibly large. Uh, I would advise you if you're placing spikes and munchers to be very conservative with them and don't spam them because spikes can be very, very brutal in this game. How do you redirect a thwomp's direction? Well, you can't turn... You can't make a down thwomp go left or right. You can't do that. You can move him. Like, I can move this thwomp if I had, like, a helmet. 
but I can't change him into like a right thwomp. If I had a setup like this, let's see. Like I could do something like this. And oh, I, I think the one way is the wrong way. I did. I showed how to do infinite checkpoints. Yeah. So if I do this, I can move the thwomp and then I can like redirect him. Yeah, you might be able to move him with a snake block, but there's no way to do it without like other things, right? So maybe you could do like something like this, I guess. But it's still you, you're still not changing the direction of the thwomp. You're just moving the thwomp, you know? So you can. Oh well, fuck. <laughs> I can move him, but he's still a down thwomp, you know, so. The dry bone shell can go underwater if you hold down. Uh, I haven't really messed with water at all in this game, honestly. I covered the, I covered screen lock earlier today. Do snake blocks always start going right? Um, you can have them start going up, but it's either up or right are your only options. But yeah. How do you make a P switch active machine? Um, actually, let's let's um, let's actually look at P switches. They can go left. Oh, they can go left. Well, there you go. Uh, how do how do P switch? <laughs> how do P switch? Why don't we just make that the question? All right, a lot of things you can do with P switches from Mario Maker One that we've kind of learned. Um. Let's say you don't want, cause like midair P switch jumps are a thing still. Uh, you could make, uh, we don't want, if, if you don't want the player to be able to do a midair P switch jump, but you want them to activate a P switch, you could do this same as a muncher and this should activate the P switch. Yeah, so that still activates it right there. So the player cannot grab this P switch, but they all they can do is activate it. So that works. If you wanted it to be like out of the player's hand, you could do something like this. And once again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. So I'm just showing one way to do this. I have a P switch come out of a pipe. Would this work? I don't even know if this will work. I, I can make, I can definitely make something that works. It just might take me a second to figure out. I'm actually, I'm, I'm curious if this would work. Oh, that actually does work. <laughs> oh, that's one way. It's a lot of P-switches. And like, once again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. This is just one way to do it. So yeah, it is annoying. Sick beat, new song for my people. Can you put it upside down? Um, Yeah, so if you want to make an upside down P-switch, it's really easy. You just put a ceiling so if you have a p switch if you just put them like this they'll always be upright if you want an upside down p switch you just grab a p switch and then do that the cool thing about upside down p switch is that you cannot grab them i cannot grab this p switch all i can do is that to activate it that's the only thing you can do what else do you put in can you put a p switch on a note block you can does that do anything hmm. just the same as ground i guess Yoshi can, yeah, I think you can grab it with Yoshi, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this, because that's annoying. What happens if you, I guess this will just write it, won't it? Yeah, it just spits it upside down. Can you put an upside down P-switch and then blow it up? Yeah, I think that makes it go normal. Yeah, I think it'll do the same thing as doing this. So you see how when I jumped on it, it like righted it. So just kind of flippy dippies there's probably something you could do with that i think a bomb would do the same thing but we'll find out if you wanted to flippy dippy it should do the same thing but we'll find out yep does the exact same thing can you launch a muncher upward into an upside down yeah so enemies can enemies can still activate p switches for sure um, so if you did like this, 
So that muncher will activate the P-switch. Uh, if you have a small enemy, uh, that won't work. So if we did like this, that won't work. See? But if we make this a big, a big enemy, this will work. So sometimes big enemies activate P-switches where small enemies do not. Um, so it just depends on what you need in your level. But yeah. Yes, it is still possible to push enemies with a P-switch or a POW in Mario Maker. You can still do that. So if we were to do this. You can still you can still push enemies. Oh wow, I like activated it somehow. <laughs> uh munchers are immovable. Cannot move munchers. Oh, I guess I don't know what I should use here. Maybe it should be like this. Let's do it like this. This is gonna be easiest. Can you make enemies grow? No. But yeah, you can see I can move the enemy. Same as Mario Maker 1. Still possible to move and manipulate enemies. You can also do that. <laughs> Dude, I made that motherfucker fly. <laughs> yeah. Can you push multiple enemies at once? Uh, I don't think so. I think if you tried to, they might end up stacking together, kind of. So yeah, you can, you can like, so I pushed, I turned one enemy into two, or I turned two enemies into one. That's kind of funny. You can probably theme a puzzle around that, right? You wouldn't know this is actually two enemies. <laughs> I wonder if I could do this, hang on. You could also move it like that, I guess. Interesting. I think you can push them with POWs. I think the POW would be the exact same. Where is the POW? Why do bombs no longer blow up POWs? Uh, they do. They do blow up POWs. You just have to do it correctly. Oh, can you not? Oh, I guess you just kill enemies. No, I guess I guess you kill enemies now by dropping a POW. I did not know that. I thought you could do that. I think that's a change from Mario Maker 1. All right, if you want to activate a POW with a bomb... Let's just verify. Okay, let's see if that blows it up. It does not. But if you do want to blow up a POW with a bomb, you could just, all you have to do is place the bomb. You need to place the POW on top of a block. And that can be like an ice block or anything. And now it will activate the POW. There you go. How do I come up with cool ideas? Uh, I just kind of fuck around until I make something that I think is good. How can you make a multiplayer level? Well, when you upload a level, when you upload a level, it gives you the option for a tag. So. Huh, that's weird. Like, it's. Whoa, it's like stopping me sometimes. Why is it stopping me sometimes? Weird. What is the Red Pow? Uh, Red Pows are a 3D World exclusive, I believe. Uh, yo, Cobalt, thank you for the tier 3, 28 months. Sorry, I have alerts off right now, but uh, thank you so much. Uh, making hot garbage is easy. You don't need me to teach you that. If you want a red POW, you just have to place a POW in 3D World, hold circle, and now you have a red POW. And red POWs do uh, different things than normal POWs. Uh, red POWs can cause, like, chain reactions. They can also, like, break bricks and shit. So... You can see I blew up a bunch of bricks there. But yeah. Any trampoline jumps? Well, hold A. Sorry, I use a PlayStation controller. <laughs> My feels. Anybody can make hot garbage, dude. Making hot garbage is easy. How do you test a multiplayer level before publishing if you have no friends? That's a great question. I do not have an answer. <laughs> 
How do you decide how to make big how to how big to make jumps in a level? Um for me that usually becomes like a issue of consistency. Like if you make a jump so big that you can't make it very often, or like you don't know why, it's probably too big of a jump. You should probably move it a little bit closer. You want it to be within comfort. Like you can make a big jump. You can make a big jump without it being like the the biggest fucking big dick maximum jump ever. So what items can you hide behind semi-solid platforms? Nothing. I don't think you can hide anything behind semi-solid platforms. I don't think you can hide. I don't think you can hide anything. <laughs> uh, is there a mode where dying player respawns in a bubble? Uh, what? Multiplayer, right? <sighs> yeah, I have an adapter. I use a PlayStation 4 controller on Switch. How do I continue knowing you'll always be in Ryu's shadow? Um, I don't, I don't need to be, I don't need to be the best or the greatest. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy and content with my life. How do you make bullet bills go faster than normal? Uh, you can't, you can't. Uh, if you want to make a faster variety of bullets, all you have to do is place a bullet like this. A lot of the, a lot of the answers to these questions is just hold a on it. So there's our normal bullet and there's this one. And then you just hold this. Then you have the red cannon right there. So now you've made a faster version of the bullet. It's pretty simple. Is there any way to test your level uh, from editor using a GameCube controller? I don't, there's probably a GameCube adapter. I don't know. Well, I mean, you could probably just use the smash one, right? Uh, do not, do not criticize. This is not, this is not a place where you criticize other streamers. You can criticize me all you like, but not other people. Go ahead and make fun of me all you like, but not other streamers. Can you control when bullets fire or is it just a global timer? Well, it depends on when you spawn them. They're not on a global timer. So like the red cannon won't fire until I spawn it. So like it'll spawn now and then it will fire immediately. But if I despawn it, it will stop firing. So How do you make claws appear when you want them to appear? I think I need a little bit more specifics to understand that question. I need to understand a little bit more. I mean, you can control when a claw machine appears with a, with a track, right? If you want to, if you want a claw machine to appear later, you can just make it come down on the track, right? And then eventually it will fall down and then you can use it. Um, just like, this is the same kind of principle I use with the fish. Like when I want a fish to appear, it's like, it's like making a bomb fuse, you know? See, now that now it's here and then now you use it. It's kind of funny when it just drags you on the ground. <laughs> Pretty funny. I've never seen a claw machine used to drag you on the floor. <laughs> How do you choose a timer for your stage? Always max, except for speedruns. I mean, the timer in, in, all, in like 90% of levels, the timer is irrelevant. So uh, if it's going to be a longer level, I'd recommend making it 500. If it's going to be a speedrun, then set it to whatever you want. I mean, it depends on how tight you want your speedrun to be. I don't really make speedruns, so. Can you make an auto level with claw machines? Sure, why not? I don't really make auto levels, but I don't see why you couldn't. Do P switches get activated when you get dragged on? I'm sure they do. Yeah. Quick ideas for troll claws? No, I don't. I don't have any ideas. What's my least favorite part of Mario? My least favorite part of Mario Maker 2? Uh, not being able to download and edit levels. <laughs> not that he cares. Try knocking down a knocking on a door in editor mode. I don't know what that means. What do you mean knocking on a door? What's my favorite game style? I don't mind. I, they're all fun. Um, my favorite way to make levels is uh, Lunar Magic and Super Mario and real Super Mario World. Um, Mario Maker is fun. Man, I'm really excited for whatever this extra game style is going to be. There's guaranteed to be another game style, right? It's got to be. There's, there's got to be another one. Whatever it is, whatever it is, I'm, I'm really excited for it. I, had a, I hope it's Mario 2. I'd be really down for Mario 2. Put a door and knock on it. I've never seen that. 
Is that lanky? I have never seen this. Whoa, that's a big chungus Mario. This was in Mario Maker 1. I have never I don't remember this from I didn't see that. I did not know this in Mario Maker 1. Didn't know that. Yeah, it is a shame Lanky is not in this game. What kinds of objects in the claws grab? I think the claws can grab any enemies or power-ups, but they can't grab things like uh I don't think they can grab things like spikes or blocks and stuff. So Is there a way apart from entity limits to only shoot one thing from a blaster? Sure. I can make something I can make something really fast that does that. And then, once again there's a lot of different ways that to do this, but here here is one way to do that. Uh This might actually just work by itself. Nope. Uh, let's see. This is like the shittiest setup ever. <laughs> oh, it did fire. <laughs> oh, well. There is a way to do it. Um, What if I did like this? I don't know. Put it on, yeah, you can put it on a conveyor. I do that a lot in my levels too. Um, let's see. Sometimes it's hard to come up with a setup on the fly like this. Um, let's see. There you go. It fired once. I think one thing you have to uh, be aware though is I think you could respawn it. Uh, you can respawn. There's no way to like kill bullet bill launchers, I think. So. Uh, sorry, I'm not looking at alerts right now. I've got alerts off. I will turn alerts back on. Um, so yeah, you could respawn it. Do bomb timers reset. But if you, if you if you make it so you can't go back in the level, it's it's not a big deal. Um, I didn't, I didn't even see the alert. I'm sorry. I've I've been just trying to answer questions. What can activate on off switches besides the womps? Um, things that can activate on off switches. All right, why don't we go ahead and do this? Now we've been going for almost three hours and I feel like there's still questions. What can activate on off switches? Let's answer this one. All right. So aside from Mario and Thwomps, because apparently you know about that, what can activate on off switches? Uh, for one thing, um, a bomb explosion can activate an on off switch. Like so. That activates an on-off switch. That wasn't the explosion, by the way. That was the... Let me change this to normal ground. It wasn't the ground exploding. It was the actual explosion itself. Uh, so bombs can... Um, you can throw shells into them. That works. Uh, skewers can. Uh, let's see. Icicles can. Where are icicles? The fucker icicles. An icicle will activate it. Like so. Um, skewer will activate it. There's some other things that will do it too. Skewers activate it. Um, is there anything else in SMW I'm missing? You know, here's an interesting question. If Bowser Jr. does his big butt stomp, will he activate it? That would be really funny. I haven't seen, I haven't seen a level do that. I'm actually not sure. Let's find out. Do it. Do it. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't. That would have been cool if he did that. That's a shame. Uh, here is another way to activate on-off switches that a lot of people don't know. Uh, you can do it in SMB1. One sec. You can do it in SMB1 if you have the Mega Mario costume. 
So if you have Mega Mario, you can activate on-off switches like this. What if he turns into the shell? I assume that would work. Let's find out. It does work. He also goes directly over it. So yeah, that does work. It's the same as like a like a throne shell, I guess. Uh, another thing that activates it is uh, let's go over to SMB three. Oops. Uh, this will also work with the cape. Um, you can activate switches like this. Another way to do that. Uh, we'll charge shots from clown cars. I'm actually not sure. Where is a clown car? And, uh, looks like a, a charge shot does. Yes, it does activate it. Oh, you know what's funny? In Mario Maker 1, if you wanted to charge... Wait, does that still work? Oh, okay. No, it's still, it's still exactly the same. What are the ways I kind of I showed a setup earlier so if you want a shell to spin um, if you want like an auto shell spinning you probably have to, if you wanted to use a shell you have to use a setup you can also do it very easily if you just have a beetle a beetle on the ceiling will work pretty well like this so the second this beetle falls it will be in the spinning state you have to make sure there's no ground beneath it otherwise it won't work so yeah, this, if you wanted to make like a really quick, cheap setup or something like this, you could do like this. Okay. Oh, you know, this actually, this is actually a really important question. I only learned this myself pretty recently. So if you go far enough away from the beetle, all right, do you see how it stopped activating on uh, the blocks over here? It stopped switching. That's because we despawned it, but I learned this only recently. Um, let me show one more time. So that should be activating, right? Let's say you want it to go off the entire level. So we despawned the beetle and now it's not going to work, right? Uh, we can actually make this a, uh, work throughout the entire level. If you make icicles, the ground. And the reason why is because icicles, when an enemy is on icicles, they will never despawn for some reason. Yeah, I did this in Braveheart. So now, no matter how far we go, the blocks will continue to switch. I only learned that myself like a couple days ago. So it doesn't matter how far we go, it'll keep going on and off. And if we go all the way back, it will still be spawned. We can go the entire length of the level. See, it's still going off, even though we're all the way over here. Yeah. Yeah, ice goes. Uh, what else can you use? To, well, it's not that it's not global ground. It's because enemies don't despawn on them. That's the issue. So, is there something else that would work like that? Oh, fire bars. Oh, okay. So apparently, you can do this with fire bars as well, and the enemies won't despawn. Snivy, is that how that works? M no, munchers will despawn. Munchers will. That I'm positive of that. Oh, blue platforms. Okay, so there's actually a lot of different ways you can do it. Conveyors, maybe? No, conveyors aren't. Conveyors are ground. The old way was fire bars. Okay, well, there you go. If you wanted to make it switch faster, just, like, make the thing closer. See, now it's, now it's going off like crazy. What has global timers? All right. Um, I guess we can do a quick thing on fire bars. How do fire bars work? Let's do a quick thing on fire bars here real fast. Has this been helpful? Did I, did I, did I waste my day doing this? Have I been helping you guys? I hope I have. I hope this is a useful thing for everybody. Very helpful. Helps a ton. All right, cool. No, very much so. All right, good. Okay. So fire bars. Fire bars are pretty unique in Mario Maker um, because where are fire bars? Because fire bars are on a global timer. So when you first spawn in the level, we're going to uh, hold right. Pay attention to the timer. So we're at 
at 297, that's where the fire bar was, right? It was like coming down on us right here. So if we wait a couple seconds, we're gonna wait like two or three seconds. And now we're gonna go. See, now the fire bar is over here. That's because the fire bar is on a global timer. Uh, the second you load into a level, it is already spinning. So that makes a big difference in levels. Um, so if you place a fire bar in a level somewhere, you can actually make, you can like, you can in theory make an impossible level if they don't go at exactly the right timer. So that leads to a lot of really shitty levels where it's like, oh, I guess the fire bar, I didn't load the fire bars at the right time. Um, no, so if I go through a door, so that only lasts until you go through a door or a pipe. So if I go through a door um, or a pipe, for instance, uh, let's see, where is it? All right, we're going to go through this pipe or this door. When I go through the door, it will reset the fire bar. It will always load there no matter what timer it is. So let's wait like five seconds. Yeah, the fire bar will always be there no matter what. There's no way to do that. Same thing with pipes. So once you load it, uh, it resets it. So yeah. Does the global... No, if you, it's the same thing. If you go through a pipe, it resets the global timers. So if you go through a pipe, this would be the exact same situation. So just it's just something to be aware. If you're putting a lot of fire bars in a level, you probably want to test it from the start so you know where fire bars will be. How does that work in verses? I don't know. I don't really know how things work in verses because I don't make stuff in verses. So another thing that's a global timer is burners. Burners are also on a global timer. Um, there's two different timers for burners. There's on and off. So, uh, and these work exactly the same as fire bars, except it's like a 50, 50. They're either on or off. So this one, this variety starts level off and then they do that. And yeah. So you, you'll, you'll never get like desynced burners. Does that make sense? Cause they're always, they're always either going or not. And then when you go through a door, uh, this burner will always activate immediately. And then this one will not, um, same kind of thing as fire bars are boo rings on a global timer. No boo rings are when you spawn them. Boo rings are based on spawn. They are not based on global timers. Uh, let's see any other questions. So yeah, burners and fire bars are unique timers. Uh, also skewers are not on a global timer. Skewers are based on when you spawn them. So a skewer will not go off until you like activate it. So like those skewers will activate because they're on screen. But if I like, if I like go past it, it will stop activating. So, well, everything can be reset with a door. You cannot put wings on an angry sun. How do you make a timer for a piece switch? Well, a piece switch is already a timer, isn't it? Well, diagonal thwomps are like a glitch that, um, and I'm not even really sure how to set that up. I think you have to like drop a shell in front of it or something. I don't know. There's, there's setups for that. I don't, I don't know how to do that. I've never used that in the level before. Yes. Key death is still a thing. Yeah, you can do, you can do shell jumps and power drops off of a claw machine. Yeah. What's the most complicated way to trigger a P switch? I don't understand that question. What are my thoughts on tornadoes? Uh, tornadoes suck. Not very good. Do sideways thwomps slide along slopes? I don't think so. I don't think they do. I think they just stop, but let's find out. How do you do upside down? Upside down is nighttime uh, ground. Yeah, I think they just stop. Right. When am I going to make a level offline? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe someday. There is no way to keep the airship from swaying ups and down, but on the flip side, if you want sky, sky is kind of like airship and sky does not sway up and down. Sky does not sway up and down. Why is Bowser able to hit you with fire a mile away? Basically, whenever you load Bowser, like, like if you place Bowser way the fuck over here, um, put him here, 
Put him on a track. Basically, there's like another spawn. There's like a whole other mechanic of spawning with Bowser. Is it hot enough? Oh, uh, I haven't been I haven't been outside in a couple days. <laughs> so yeah, so no Bowser fire. But if you get the closer you get, uh, Bowser fire will start spawning on screen. And the Bowser fire is random. At least I think it's random. Um, so you can see the Bowser fire. It was around here is when it started spawning. And it will spawn in waves of like two to three. And yeah. Are there any naughty glitches I can show you guys? Uh, there's a glitch I know of, which I don't think has been patched out yet, where you can do uh, this. Hang on. It's a, it's a really dumb glitch, but it is pretty funny. Uh, let's get this, put this here. And where's the vine? You guys have probably already seen this. I think I showed this on stream a couple days ago. This is a pretty funny glitch. So you do that, go in the door, and then... Wait, did they... No way they patched that out already, did they? Did they already patched this? Oh, it has to be invisible. It has to be invisible. Duh. That's right. Where is invisible? All right, here we go. Invisible block, go through the door, and now it's now it's a block here. <laughs> so kind of a dumb glitch. It's also solid for enemies. Just it's like it's there, even though it's not. I don't really know a good way to use this. This this is probably going to get patched out pretty soon. Can you still hit it? Yes, you can still hit it. That's just like, does that really work in SMW? Uh, pipe or change on a re-enter is something change like cannon that wasn't there up here. Uh, yeah, you can do stuff like that. Um, so if you wanted to make stuff like appear and disappear, um, you could do things like this. There's all kinds of like tricks you can do and how you use them is up to you. So if you like overlay blocks here, so yeah, those are blocks behind here. So if, if we come here in the level, uh, that bullet bill launcher won't be there. But if we put a P switch, and you'll see this a lot in puzzle levels, right? I already showed how custom auto scroll works. So, okay, no bullet bill launcher. Activate the P switch, go through the door, and then now the bullet bill launcher is there. So. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of stuff you can do like that. Oh yeah. You can do this with on off. Yeah, there's all different kinds of ways to do this. Also, I think when it comes back, it'll kill it. Yeah, it'll kill the bullet bill launcher. No, no worries. I don't know if they've patched anything. I don't know. I actually want to see something real fast. I want to see if this will actually kill the bullet bill launcher. So that's, I just killed the bullet bill launcher. Can I respawn it or is it dead? Okay, it's dead. So I killed it. <laughs> was this change I put it through? Yeah, yeah, we've been over that. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Any other question? We've been going for about three hours of, of Q and A. Are there any other questions? Well, you can only activate an invisible block by jumping up into it. So you'd need a shell to go up into the block. How do you manipulate the screen to lock for two side levels? Uh, I showed that earlier. Can you add upside down P switches to, to wing blocks? I'm not sure actually, maybe. It'd be pretty cool actually. Nope, can't do that. Not possible. How do you make a launcher start moving? I mean, you can put a launcher on a track or you can put a launcher on a conveyor. Both of those things would work. Um, if you want, if you just want a launcher to move, right? Moving launcher. Can you do anything with the angry sun? No, you can't. You can only place one angry sun and then that's it. 
How do you place a clown car in the air without it flying down just out of screen? Uh, you can put it on track. That would prevent it from going down. Is there a way to make music play constantly in sub areas? You could have like an enemy that's always there or something. Um, there's, there's ways to do that. Advice on using lava in a fun way. Uh, there's a level I played by Wari Uzo not that long ago that uses, they use lava in, a, in probably the coolest way I've seen it. Uh, where is that level? Try to find that one. I don't even know. It might not even be in my like list anymore. Uh, let's see. Where is? There we go. This is probably one of this is probably one of the coolest Mario Maker levels I've ever played. Period. Honestly, this is a really really cool level. You can only place one Angry Sun. How does a launcher work on a seesaw? Uh, it makes it go down dude this level is really fucking sick so this this level there's like it's a shame we can't download it but there's like all kinds of machinery beneath the level that makes that makes it all work the way it does like it makes the pegs go up and down this level is fantastic if you haven't played this level i would highly recommend playing this one it really shows the possibilities with mario maker uh there is the course id Um, on off blocks activating anytime you jump. Yeah, that, that level, that's one of the best Mario Maker levels I think I've ever played. It's also just like a fun level, you know, it's just a fun level. You fold a pizza, does it become a sandwich? No, you, well, you can download it, but you can't edit it anymore. Can reach out to that creator and see what he did. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Wario Yuzo could post uh, pictures of it. Wario Yuzo's around online. Thank you for taking uh, time out of my day to answer questions. Uh, at least I can do. Ideas for a challenging boss fight? No, I don't really have any ideas to share right now. I've got nothing. I'm just kind of tired. <laughs> Total War Total War has been taking it out of me, man. I'm stressed out from Total War. <laughs> uh, low gravity is the night air theme. So if you want to go to night sky, that should give you low gravity. And now we're in low gravity. Boom, boom, boom. How do you make a randomizer? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know how you make random stuff in this game. I'm sure there's a way. Uh, claw machines, probably. Yeah, I do have blood and gore in Yuan Shu now. <laughs> That's like the easiest piece of jump ever. Yo, Earth Melon, thank you so much for the five gift subs. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Any other questions? How do you make it so just the enemies are low gravity? If you just want enemies in low gravity, you have to go to Airship Night. Airship Night is how you do it. Uh, thank you very much, Earth Melon. So this one, Mario, is not affected by low gravity, but the enemies are. So you could do stuff like... Like that. <laughs> I like, I really like Airship Knight. I really, really like Airship Knight in SMB3. I'm gonna make an Airship Knight level on SMB3. Uh, I already showed custom auto scrolls. I already showed it. When's your dad coming back? He's never coming back because you're disappointing. Are only certain stages allowed to be night themed? No, all the stages can be night themed. Just no SM, uh, just no 3D world. No 3D world levels can be night themed. How do you make lava go up? No, no, I already showed that. Is it possible to make Maws move to the right without cannons? Um, I think some enemies... I mean, one thing I do if I want an enemy to go right is I'll just make him hit a wall. But are there some enemies that if they spawn... If if you spawn... Will he be following you? I'm not sure. I think if you go through a door, some enemies will be walking towards you. So you probably want to use doors and pipes if you want an enemy to go to the right. You could also use pipes... Like, if you wanted a beetle to go to the right, you could use a pipe and have it come out. What can you do with seesaws? Uh, I think the, in the most interesting thing to do with seesaws is, like, ground pounding them. And uh, I think ground pounding seesaws is a really cool thing. 
So if we had a ground pound with like a big boot. Let's see, where's a big boot? Get big boot. <laughs> there you go. Catch it, catch it, catch it. No, shit. But yeah, ground pounding those are pretty cool. <laughs> Dude, I activated the P I threw the P switch under the big boot as it was falling and activated it with the big boot. <laughs> Any way to respawn just oh okay you know what actually this is a really good question again really really good question i don't know if that's what you were intending but um let me show let me show you guys something real fast so you guys remember how i showed the shell setup earlier to make a shell i did like this and i did this and i placed a bomb this is this is actually really important all right, so this this will explode and it'll give you a shell, right? Um, let's say you want to reset. Like, oh, I, I fucked it up. Give me a reset door, right? So we have a reset door. Um, it won't work because the blocks have now... The, these blocks are gone. So if you want this to come back every time you go through this door, uh, you this is what you want to do. You want to place... Uh, you want to place either uh, question blocks or other ones. And then you want to put a vine inside these. A vine will force these to respawn every time. Oh, hang on. Oops. Uh, whoops. I have, to take, I have to take the vine out to put wings on this block. There we go. All right. So now this will respawn every single time. It only works with vines. Yes. Only works with vines. So now, every time I go through these doors, uh, the setup will respawn. Yeah, just in case you needed to do something like that. Needed. Can you put wings on an ant? I think so, yeah. Right, right. This was exactly the same in Mario Maker 1. This was exactly the same. And that goes, this will go for bombs and stuff as well, too. So if you wanted like a bomb set up, it would be exactly the same. Is there a way to give a player a shell midair that can't be used as a helmet? I mean, you can't, uh, you can't use this shell. Like, this is, this is not a shellment. So, you can't, you can't put on a beetle. Yo, thanks for the bits. Why vines? I don't know, just vines respawn every time, for whatever reason. If you were to put, like, a pow in this, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work, I think. Yeah, so the POW didn't respawn, but vines will. So. Try holding A on the beetle. Right, well, you can... I, I understand you can... I, I am aware you can make a beetle shellman out of this. My point is that you can't put a beetle on your head. You can only put a shellman on your head. So if you give the player a shell, they can't, they can't put on a shell. Can you put wings on a vine? No, you cannot. Because, vi yeah, vines could be important to a level. I mean, anything could be important to a level, right? So... Well, this will also go on YouTube, and this will be a reference for anybody. Uh, I hear Yanni. <laughs> Laurel or Yanni. Any other questions? Do anybody have any other questions I can answer? Well, I mean, this, this setup would work in 3D World, would it not? I have to remake it, but I don't think this would... I think this would be exactly the same. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, put this. Oh, well, there's no vines here, right? Yeah, there's no vines. So, I don't know. I don't know, actually. What about keys? Could you do it with keys? Maybe keys would reset. <laughs> would this reset? No, it wouldn't, would it? Yeah, I don't know. There might not be a way to make a resettable thing in 3D World. Where's the door? 
Yeah, 3D world because there's no vines. Yeah. So there's no vine, so you can't make a resettable trick like that in 3D world, I guess. Uh, you would need a different setup. You could, So you just have to come up with something more creative. Um, I think I could make a limited... I think I could make a setup that, that gave you limited tries, but maybe not infinite. Like, uh, let's see. You know, and if, if, if it hasn't been made in Mario Maker, you could always just be the innovator yourself and come up with it yourself, you know? Like, Mario Maker 2 is very new, and nobody knows everything yet. So we're all just kind of we're all just kind of figuring stuff out as we go. Oh, well, the shell... This wouldn't work because the shell would only activate once, too. I don't know. Yeah, actually, I actually do not know how to make a setup that would go infinitely. I'm sure that there's a way. I just don't know it. Maybe if you did this. Hang on. This might work. So this would give you this would give you resets. It would be like limited, though. Because it would be limited to how many coins are in the block. <laughs> Once the coins run out, that's it. See, now, now the resets would be over, I guess. Oh, screenshot. What are some of the rules, interactions of linking and stacking enemies? Um, I mean, I don't really understand your question because it's not... You can't stack enemies in 3D world. You can't do that, but um, I don't really I don't really understand the rest of your question. I think the most thing you'll often see stacked would be things like munchers on enemies to make sure you don't jump on them. So you could do something like this, put munchers on top of it. So now you can't jump on this guy and he will chase you throughout the level. But uh, that's one thing you could do, I guess. But I don't really understand what the rules are, you mean. Maybe with turn blocks it would work. I mean, in SMW it would be easy, right? There's no turn blocks in 3D World. I'm sure that, I'm sure you can come up with something in 3D World. If you hit an on-off switch with an enemy on top, does that work? There's a Koopa. I don't actually I haven't tried this myself. I don't know the answer. So you can make a shell like that. So if you were in 3D world, you could probably do something similar, I guess. So we can make a quick resettable uh, thing here. Uh, on off switch. The only thing that might suck is that what if you need spikes on the other side, right? How do you make good levels? I mean, that made a shell. I, it's up to you to play with it, you know? I don't know. Figure it out yourselves, goddammit. <laughs> or just make levels without shell jumps because shell jumps suck. Uh, any other questions? What happens if you stand below an extending block and hit it in 3D world? Uh, it kills you, right? You just get smashed and take damage. Yeah, vertical levels do spawn things differently uh, than horizontal levels. Um, I can load up the level I'm working on currently and fuck around with it a little bit. Is there a way to stop a shell without jumping off of it? Um, no, you can like redirect it if you had like a P-switch or something. So this is the level I'm working on right now. Um, it's been a challenge just uh, making things making things spawn the way I want them to. Fuck. Maybe I should move this one down. It's been a challenge making things spawn the way I want them to. Has there been a neutral midair setup yet? Like the end of Echo Base? Not to my knowledge. I've seen a lot of different kinds of janky midairs. Um, 
but I haven't seen one that did that. Oops. Clear the question off the bottom, sure. Auto bomb and on off switch. How can you place blocks on every side of a rail? On every space of a rail rather than every other space? Uh, I can show that, I guess, in just a moment. Whoops, this is going to be a bad one. Wait. I was fucking with the, uh, the spawns here a little bit. Yeah, this is the level I'm working on right now. Uh, if you wanted to make stuff land on a rail, that'd be pretty easy if you just did like this. Let's see, where is the track? So your problem is that you have blocks that are landing. Like, you want to make blocks more, more thick on the rail than this. So I'd probably recommend doing something like this. Let's see what this is like. So, I mean, that made them thicker than it was before. So kind of saw this a lot in Mario Maker 2 and you could just continue. You could just like copy this, right? I mean, you can make this as thick as you want. You can make this as thick as a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> there you go. Look at how look at how many I have here now. It's going to be really janky, like the way you move, but yeah, as thick as you want it to be. Spiny in cloud is that the closest thing to a, a fishing boot? Yeah, more or less. Uh, you can put wings on it to make it more like a fish. There's there's no way there's no way to make a uh, fishing boot in Mario Maker 2. You can make stuff that's like kind of close, but there's no way to actually make it. Right, right. You can play with track timing all you want. Is there a way to change the initial direction of a switchable conveyor? Uh, yeah, just have something that switches it. I mean, like, you can place it however you want, right? Where's the conveyor? So, like, hold A on this one, make it switchable, and then just do that. There you go. That's easy. <laughs> now when you hit this, it'll go the other way. So now it's going right, going left, right, left, right. Have I shown the conveyor belt elevator cannon plus conveyor belts? Oh, like, is this what you're talking about? I forget how to do that. How's this going to work? That's going to go this way. So I guess this is what he's talking about. He wanted me to show this. Um... Basically, conveyors move, and you can redirect some things like this. And I don't really know, like some things will work, like piranha plants. It won't look, it won't work like that in SMW, but it does work like that in SMB one and SMB three. But you can probably do something with this. Basically, the sides of conveyors are still moving. Also, beneath it is working as well. So, might not, it might be just like an interaction you might not be aware of. If it hits a wall, it will also stop. It'll also fall off and redirect as well. There's probably some stuff you can do with that. You can wall slide on them as well in new soup. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, there's probably all kinds of stuff you can do. That also existed in uh, Mario Maker 1. The different polar color pipes affect... It'll affect the rate at which they come out. Yeah. I'm still taking questions. If you have any questions, now is a great time to do it. I'm trying to answer I'm trying to answer as literally as many questions as I can now to save from answering questions later. <laughs> I want to not have to answer questions for a while and I can just be like I answer that in the tutorial. How do you make your dad love you in 3D World? Try try being less of a loser. Can you put upside down peace switches on the belts? Uh I think so. I think so. Can you butt slide Bowser? I don't think so. Yeah, I think you can. Come on. Oops. Just trying to move this. 
That's pretty cool. I don't know what you can do with that, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. I have no idea what to do with that. That's up to you. What happens when it falls? Will, will it right itself when it falls off? Yeah, it'll do the old flippy dippy there. Also, when you hit a, a P-switch, it'll still stop conveyors. Can a cannon shoot a P-switch? No. It's probably like a puzzle application there, I think. You can put a muncher on a note block? Yes, you can. Uh, my Moon Moon's brother. I've actually never seen Moon Moon. I've never been to his stream. <laughs> I know, and he's like a huge streamer as well, but I have no idea. I, I don't know who that person is. I know, like, I know who they are, but I've never, I don't know what they look like or like what their stream is like. I just know that he's a massive streamer. Can you crash the game? Doesn't Poo Stomp Simulator still work? Can you activate multiple snake blocks at the same time? Uh, you know what? I bet you can. Hang on. I will, I will try to set that up. Let's go back to the main world. I'm fucking up my level. He's Andy from the office. Okay. I bet I can set up where you activate two P-switches or two snakes at the same time. All right, so you come out of a pipe and you're centered. And if you had one here and one here. Yeah, you can. I didn't realize you can make these go left. All right. So we're going to see if we activate both of those snake blocks at the same time. Wow, that's weird. So we did, but it, like we activated the left one first and we didn't activate the right one. Well, that's weird. <laughs> so apparently you slightly can't. Yeah, they didn't activate it exactly the right time, but how would you make a don't look backstage? Uh, so usually don't look this direction levels are usually they have some kind of setup like this. Um, usually it, it usually involves, well, I think it almost always involves a boo. And a P-switch, I think. See, I've never made a level with this setup. I have played levels with this setup before. I don't know if the P-switch goes like... I'm not sure exactly how this works, but basically the principle is like this. And that the player can't look this way. So like if you turn this way, it'll fall off and activate the P-switch and then that will block you out. I think there's a better way to set this up though than how I'm doing it. Um, there's like a there's like a more efficient way to do this, but that's basically the principle of it. So now you can't look that way. A boo in a clown car. Yeah, there's, there's a better way to do it. Um, to make the muncher crush a bomb. Do you jump three times a P switch activates? Can you delete sub levels or just pipes that delete? like I mean if if you have a sub level and you're like I don't want to use this uh, this level anymore, just like the sub level, just just delete your connector. Or just zoom out and select everything and then delete it like that. There's no way to like just nuke you if, if you nuke a level, you nuke everything. You can't half nuke a level. How do you make enemies that move stand still? Uh you place them on a muncher. Or you place them on something else that doesn't move. You could also place an enemy on a bullet bill launcher and it won't move like a boo. So now the boo will not move. So there's different ways to do it. Rotate the subworld. Yeah, that was one of the first things I answered is how do you zoom out? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you could. I guess if you wanted to delete everything in the subworld, you could. I guess you could switch it. Because switching it from horizontal to vertical does delete everything. So I guess you could do that. Uh, it's exclamation point makers, I think. And that will give you the list. The spreadsheet. Yeah. How do you curve tracks? Uh, to curve a track, you place it and then you hold it. And then now you have a curved track. So and if you want to curve it the other way, there it is. Just like that. You have to place a diagonal one first. There you go. Oh, uh, this. This will be on YouTube. It will have timestamps. 
<laughs> How do you curve bullets? Uh, you gotta watch equilibrium first. You put a muncher on top of a zombie mushroom? No. What's the difference between spin jumps and normal jumps? Uh, spin jumps do not get as much height, but spin jumps can jump off of enemies that uh, other jumps cannot. For instance, I cannot normal jump on the spiny like this, but I can like this. So spin jumping allows you to spin jump on different kinds of enemies. Does the boo setup work in? Yes, it does work in New Soup. I had that in my level Braveheart. Anything else? Uh, spin jump, I think, has the same bounce height. It might have it might have slightly higher hang time or something. There's like some weird shit about that. That's a question for Fly. Fly would know the exact difference between different kinds of jumps. Thanks for doing this. It's been very helpful. How do clouds different enemies work? So if you place an enemy in a cloud, You'll almost always get the same behavior and movement out of it. Um, it reacts to how how you move and how the camera is moving. It's not something I would advise for. Whoops. I wouldn't advise um, like newer level creators doing this. Just just don't do it. You don't you don't need to put enemies in clouds. <laughs> Please don't. If you put wings on the enemy, let's see. It does something completely different as well. So if you put wings, it makes it go up and down as well. You cannot place a cloud in a claw. Cannot do that. Have I, have I done a prostate exam? It's time. I have never had a prostate exam. Can you stack zombie mushrooms? I don't think so. My facial hair gave me more authority. What about a parachute? I don't think you can do that. Yeah, can't do that. Can you make uh can you make the Lakitu throw uh, a parachute enemy though? That would make sense, right? So you can make Lakitu throw a parachuting enemy. <laughs> actually pretty cool I don't know what you would do with it but yeah you can do that anything else it's possible to create elevators that briefly pause and then continue onward a way to block them or something uh I need I need to see the level or something to understand that question can you put a zombie shroom in a clown car I don't see why not Lakitu cannot throw Bowser's. Will Potobos go the entire length of a vertical section? No, they eventually just despawn and die. What's the limit on what bullet bill launchers can... I mean, like, if you want it, you can just test that yourself, right? Like, bullet bill launchers can fire just about everything in the game. You know, like, that works. Uh, this works. Boo circles work. P switches work. Um, launchers work. Like, it's pretty much like a common sense sort of thing. You know, what can and can't, doesn't work. Pink coins do not work. Can't do that. Uh, coins do work. Um, but yeah. Figure it out. Something experiment with, experiment yourself. Uh, anything else? Uh, can you get more than one key? Uh, from red coins. No, red coins only give you one key. If you want more keys than red coins, you just have to place the key itself. Yeah, there is boom, 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 booms in all the themes. Yes. Am I making a level today? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I definitely want to get some coffee or something after this. A piece of advice would I give new level creators? Uh, make levels that you yourself find fun to play. Don't just assume like if you can't do something, don't just be like a lot of level creators do this. Like they'll make something and they can't do it. And they're like, wow, I must be bad at the game. And then they'll just keep throwing attempts at it to try to get it. If you can't do it, there's probably a reason. There might be a reason why. And there probably is a reason why. It's either the jump is too big. Like it's it's really inconsistent. It's way too fucking hard. Like something is broken. Like something is not spawning right. And if you're not having fun uploading and playing the level, probably nobody else is going to have fun doing it. So make something you yourself find fun to play. 
I would say. Is there a way to simulate wall jumping in SMB1? Not that I know of. Is it possible to put one coin in a turn block? I don't think so, no. You can only put multiple coins in one, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah. Thanks, Barb. This is awesome. Yeah, I've been going for three and a half hours. <laughs> it's been three and a half hours of answering questions. Why do people think I'm a dick? You seem all right. Eh, it's just kind of a meme. I don't know. Did they patch fire? Yeah, fire flower wall climbing is out. It's no longer in the game. How do you slide down a hill? You press down. There you go. Do I feel like a teacher? No. Can red coins go in hidden box, hidden blocks? Oh, I know keys can. I don't know about hidden blocks though. I don't think can, can, can keys even go in blocks? You can't put keys in blocks, but you can easily put, key, you can't put key, uh, key coins, but you can put keys. Where's the logic in that? Where's the fucking logic in that? <laughs> I see no logic. The sliding down a hill damage Boom Boom or Bowser? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know if that's because I landed on him or what. Well, I am damaging him, but he's also damaging me. So no. Are there other things that Mario can interact with cannonballs in the air? I don't understand your question. Like you can, you can kill cannonballs in the air. What's the best Kaizo hack to get into the genre? Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can get into the genre anywhere. A bunch of different people, a bunch of people have gotten into the genre in different ways. I started with Kaizo one, um, like Tofu started with more recent hacks, like Laser Belch. Laser Belch started with Dram World. Pooh started with Kaizo one and Dram World. Like a bunch of people, some people started with, you know, storks. Some people started just, just pick something and play it and beat it. Is my advice. Uh, the sun is pretty fucking worthless. I'm actually curious though. Does, does the sun ignite a bomb? I don't know. I haven't seen that. Does the sun ignite a bomb? It does. I haven't seen that. Sun's got a nice pair of boobs. Fuck. <laughs> Did I beat Kaizo 1 without quick saving? On my first playthrough of Kaizo 1, I was no save state until uh, Cerulean Cave. Okay, it does ignite a bomb. And uh, I think I save stated the final castle as well on my first playthrough. And then after that, I, uh, I, I, I speed ran the game for a long time. I actually have a, I actually have a pretty decent time in Kaizo one, but uh, that was like when I first started. And then, uh, after that I did no save states in Dram one. I did in, when I did, uh, when I did Bonsai Mario world was Bonsai Mario world was one of the first Kaizo hacks I ever played. I did no save states in Bonsai Mario world until, uh, until that ding fries are done level. <laughs> <laughs> and then I then I used I used a save state in that one. I think I used three save states in Bonsai and I haven't used save states since Bonsai Mario World, I think was the last time I did that. That was like years and years ago. Any other questions? Favorite new enemy to build with? Um Favorite new enemy <sighs> I don't know what what's I guess I'm not sure what constitutes an enemy because I think sideways thwomps are really cool. Maybe sideways thwomps will be my answer. They're very useful. Yeah, only Mario can interact with cannonballs. SMB1 air stall glitch. I do not know about that. I don't know what an elevator means. I don't know what that means. Are you talking about like ground pounding a, uh, an exclamation block and getting thrown up? Is that what you're talking about? That's the only thing I can think of. What's up, Inter? How can you place the uh, feathers and leaves without them floating off screen without placing a block? Uh, you can put them on a track. Uh, like so. Put a track. 
put a cape. Oops. There you go. Now it's not going to fly. It's not going to float away. It's not going to go anywhere. Which Mario streamers could beat me in a fight? Uh, Mario streamers? I don't know. It's like a question like, could, uh, could you beat, could you beat like a hundred horse sized ducks or one duck sized horse or something? <laughs> and maybe Shabda. Yeah, do, are they armed? My, uh, my sarcasm would overpower them all. Belt and Tofu seem like they'd be good in a fight. Maybe like a tag team sort of thing. 100 horse sized duck sounds terrifying. It does. <laughs> How many average Mario? I think I could take like two or three Mario streamers in a fight. 100 B size aura or one aura sized beast. Oh yeah, Big John. Big John would just fucking break me over his knee. He'd like, he'd like Batman. He'd like Bane me if I was Batman. <laughs> Victory has defeated you. Snap. Uh, is that it? Are we done? Any other questions? I think we're done. What about one Big John size Moni? <laughs> That'd be horrifying. He curled me with his pinky. I was I was born in the darkness, Gina. <laughs> Do I know what the best time of day is to upload a map a map traffic wise? I have no fucking clue. Who cares? Can you preload multiple springs and trigger them on touch? I don't know what that means. All right, I think we're done. I think we're done. GG tutorial tutorial done. Uh, I glad that, that went for almost four hours. I think I answered every question that you guys had. I hope, I hope that was useful. I hope I was able to help and be useful to all of chat. So, uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this. The tutorial will be on YouTube, uh, soon enough and you guys will timestamp it and, uh, make sure you guys have all the answers on where everything is.